Hello and welcome everybody to the 2022 Spartan World Championship live from Abu Dhabi in the beautiful United Arab Emirates. I'm David Watson. With me is Steve Hammond and we're gearing up for the biggest race in obstacle racing of the year. It's an incredible stage that's being set here. Uh, the weather has actually turned perfect. You're going to see all sorts of incredible action over the coming hour and a half or so. We're going to take you right through it. And of course, uh, without Abu Dhabi Sports Council, none of this event could be possible. These guys are specialists in putting on sporting events in this region and just take a look at what they do. People think I'm crazy for doing this. But let's be honest. Are we all a little crazy? That's what makes life fun, baby. So come get crazy with us. And me. And me. Come lift with us. Come hang with me. Come throw spears with us. I know you can do it. Welcome back to the 2022 Spartan World Championship live from Abu Dhabi. David Watson and Steve Hammond with you presented by Abu Dhabi Sports Council this weekend. We are setting the stage for the biggest race in obstacle racing in the calendar. And uh, Steve, the atmosphere is building. You're fresh off the course. This is the ultimate battle of the year, men and women. Abu Dhabi is unbelievable. This course is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal, mate. It's it is very hot out there, very warm. What's nice about this uh, the temperature right now? It's uh, it's dropping as we speak. Um, so I've been out on the course all week, and uh, literally at this time, about four o'clock, the temperature goes to this perfect kind of you know low seventies, high sixties kind of temperature, and winds drop, and it's just this beautiful, beautiful racing, uh, albeit a little bit hot, but. But, uh, you know, they, they can sweat it out out there, which is, uh, which is going to be great. But um, the atmosphere right now, just come out there, it's buzzing. It's really, really good. Lots of ath athletes here, and they're very, very excited to come and run this um, rather interesting and brutal course. <laughs> Let's get to that in just a sec. And I'm excited to talk about the fact that this is a, actually a very unique event for the fact that it's the first 10k world championship in spartan history but let's just take a step back for a second talk about setting the stage here what we're about to witness for everybody watching who may not be as familiar uh with the world championship steve take us through it what's this weekend all about so yeah so we we have um you know obviously we've got uh, many different distances but our championship distance for this year is the uh is the 10k and uh we've got 28 obstacles um you know, we're, we're looking at a course which uh, is undulating over these dunes, and it's absolutely, um, I mean, you can see the scenes there right now. We've got athletes warming up. Uh, it looks fairly hard packed in the festival, but oh boy, you know, you step, you step foot out of the festival and you are, you know, shin deep in sand. And, uh, you know, these obstacles get very, very tough, especially, um, you know, when the body fatigues and uh we as we said 28 obstacles out there um distance 
just to, sh- you know, we're talking about a, bit, a little bit over this course kind of uh, as it came out, probably a little bit over 10K. Um, like no, a little, like little bit of specials. Seven, just under seven <laughs> miles. <but. laughs> I know. Uh, we, we be, you know, we, we uh, diverted them up a few dunes here and there. No worries, but, but th- th- that's fine and we're going to see all that action. Um, but th- this weekend really is about the best obstacle races in the world descending on one location to showcase their skills isn't it it's been a fantastic year in build up for this and uh, I've, I've, I've had the privilege to be able to witness in person um, the European Championship the North American Championship and also the um, you know trifecta world uh, championship in Greece as well so um, a lot of these athletes have come here we've got the uh, got the North American champion uh, Ryland Shadeg here uh, we've got the uh, the current world champion Ryan Atkins um, uh, here is, is Richard Hynek as well um, you know as we're looking at the men's field but unfortunately I think he's injured so he is sitting this one out but uh um they really have battled hard um you know to get here and also um you know they've they've uh They've tra- this is their A race. This is this is what they this is what they want to take away. We're looking at uh, Spartan CEO and founder Joe DeSena there at the start line, along with uh, uh, Suhail, um, who looks after uh, events for Abu Dhabi Sports Council. You can see uh, Sergey Peraligan on the right hand of the screen there. The, the men lining up first. What we will see during this broadcast for everybody watching, you'll see the men take off first, and about half an hour later, or right on half an hour later should everything Indeed. go to plan uh the female elite field will take off so steve in the past the uh the world championship has always been a beast that's a half marathon yes. 21 yep. point one kilometers and this is the first time we've seen the 10k distance and in your opinion um i think that or you tell me but in your opinion is that enough is it enough to have a 10k world championship oh 100 percent. i mean you you will see these guys collapsing at the finishing line in fact i i i um you know ran around the course earlier and there's going to be some definite blowouts on the on this course you know people going off too fast um you know uh 10k is an amazing um you know we're looking at around um, maybe 50 minutes to an hour. It's very difficult to tell how the course held up. We're not talking about um, it. We're not talking about a, a regular road 10k. Here, oh, we? we're not. You, you, you know, uh, some of these guys have 30 minute uh, 10k uh, pace, which is extremely fast. One of them right there um, on, the, on the far right. Of there he is, Ryan Atkins, the defending champion and uh, world champion from 2021. He's he's actually looking soaked there. Not sure if that's sweat I or think water. That's heat mitigation. Yeah. So uh, it is warm out there. I think it's got some little ice packets in there that has just kept him cool. So he, he is the master of uh, uh, prep, preparing his body um, and also his mind ready for this. And he, he I talked to him yesterday, and he's he he wants this. He, what, he absolutely wants this. What kind of preparation does it take an elite an elite athlete rather, um, you know, to, to take part in this uh, in this ten k in the desert, Steve? I mean, a lot of these athletes come from a lot of different backgrounds in terms of, you know, not just running. You know, uh, we just talked about Ryan there and he has a, um, you know, a plethora of different, uh, you know, sports skills, you know, uh, and a biker, a climber. Um, lots and lots of it, you know, he's, he's got a lot of different um, odd world records and stuff. And it's just, um, yeah, like he, he comes from multi-sports. He knows, he's, as you say, no, he's a bit of a scientist. As well. he yeah, is, he's, yeah. he's a bit of a scientist. You can see the, uh, the glucose monitor on his, uh, on his left uh, tricep there and he's yeah. got the ice packs. I mean, if you look around uh, the, uh, just to his right, I mean, we should, we should definitely talk about VJ Jones. Absolutely. I mean, we're going to go through our uh, sort of men's picks in a minute. Uh, uh, but VJ is there and he's come in with a supreme confidence. Um, you know, he's done extremely well in, 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 in the series and in the US, especially at these 10K flat courses. Um, I, I, you know, I can't remember the last time he actually lost a super. Um, so he's he's come in with um, a lot of confidence. We can see the uh, the men's field absolutely uh, packed there. Um, and... Uh, you know, once it kind of filters out, we'll be able to uh, sort of 
you know, see these top five, six, seven guys. These guys, let's let's talk really quickly about the road to the World Championships yes. for these elite races, and then we'll talk about some of our picks. Hello to you too, VJ. Um, <laughs> the, the, the qualification process, I mean, these athletes do have to compete at regular races throughout the world um, or, you know, season uh, uh, series and, and championships to, to qualify to get Absolutely, here. and the European series and the, uh, the North American series has been very, very competitive this year, uh, as we can see them all lined up. Um, you know, talk about a few of the a few of the athletes that have done extremely well this year. Um, you know, we've talked about Richard Heineck winning the uh, European Championship and the Trifecta World Championship as well. Unfortunately, he, he currently is here, but he's chosen not to race due to an Achilles heel um, issue. So pause on that just for a sec, because I think it's, it is, he is such an incredible athlete. And for him oh, to phenomenal. not be standing there at the start line right now yeah, really changes the game. Must be gut-wrenching. Must be gut-wrenching. Well, not only gut-wrenching, but it really changes the game for the likes of uh, Ryan Atkins, for example, yeah. who's, who's just well, lost a pretty, he, pretty tough competitor. Yeah, absolutely. Not just Ryan, but Rylan Shadegg, who I can't quite see in there. He's like tucked in the back there somewhere. But Rylan Shadegg had one of the most amazing battles over the trifecta weekend with Richard Hynek. Uh, as we see them just about to take off, I think we're uh, uh, right on time here in Abu Dhabi. Um, but uh, just to go through a few others of my uh, sort of top fives, um, yeah, you know, or, or maybe a little bit more. But I like how you're giving yourself the wiggle room there. Uh, by Steve. Yeah, the top a little five, bit I, more. Not, not going to give you a top three pick right yeah. now. <laughs> so v, v, VJ, um, VJ Jones, Sergey uh, uh, Palingi, and also Ryland Shadegg, Ryan Atkins, and uh, kind of my dark horse, um, who I think will do very, very well. He is follow Czech, uh, fellow Czech um uh, races a lot with uh, Richard Heineck is Pavel Hardina. Mm. He has done extremely well in the European races and uh, we will see him be up in that top pack because he really does want to put his name on the map and prove that uh, that he, he is a top five competitor. You see him right there. And yeah, absolutely. Yep. What, is it, what is it about the Eastern European athletes, Steve, that make them so formidable out there? Oh, they're, they're just so... Gritty and, you know, they train hard and their attitude, you know, always... With a smile on their face, and it's just it's it's fantastic, and they 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 want it. Let's just uh, explain here what's going on. You can see the race director Garfield Griffiths <laughs> there he taking is. through the, uh, uh, taking the athletes through some final instructions. Generally, uh, what's he talking about right now, Steve? To the yeah, athletes? so he'd just be going on. Um, uh, clarifying some of the the key aspects out on course so um, you know uh, how many penalty loops are out there which are you know which are seven seven penalty loops what they look like uh, they're red and they're going to be on the left hand side as you see them and well marked and there's lots of other um, you know different informations that he's going to give them some front fence crossings um, so the, the actual true distance of the course um, and so some of the guys will switch this stuff out. Some of these guys will, will listen. You can see Ryan Atkins is always a listener. He wants to get that one, you know, that 0.5%, mm. you know, and that might be the key uh, information. Here we can see Robert Coble, who is this head referee, just making sure that he's clarifying some of the, uh, you know, must hit the bell. It must be physical. Um, the bell, you know, of course, on, on uh, rig obstacles, for example. You've exactly. got to make it through. You tap the bell. Um, two types of penalties out there this weekend. We've got the penalty loop, of course, and, yep. and that's going to be become much more uh, of a feature in yep. 2023 in the elite field. And then, of course, these guys will also be completing burpee penalties. And, and yeah, the, the for a failure of an obstacle. For the failure yep. of an obstacle. Yep. And the, the head official there taking through burpee form. You can see the guys are really getting fired up right now. Uh, the female field uh, still uh, back in the festival getting ready. We've got all sorts of cool, uh, uh, cool tricks up our sleeve uh, to showcase this race. Uh, we've got Cam Cameras and drones and and various buggies driving out the sand. Steve, you've been uh, out there. It's, it's absolutely it's yeah. We've got a really good media crew and we've got some uh, uh, really good um, uh, buggies and rabbits who will uh, who will get a lot of this. And we've just um, you know spent a lot of the morning driving around, sort of uh, making a good plan of uh, what obstacles they're going to kind of catch and uh, be able to uh, to show you guys. 
Um, and they're going to start off with, uh, you'll, you'll see them go off in a minute, there's a slight downhill, um, and then they're going to get straight into yes. the, uh, you know, the sand and the dunes. Let, let's talk about the start of the course, so, uh, so everybody's going to see, uh, see the, the elite men take off in just a second. They're going to sprint uh, through that downhill. It's kind of fairly flat sort of scrubland, if you like, a sandy scrubland for about the first two and a half kilometers. It is, and uh, uh, we've just seen uh, maybe about a thousand people people just go through this so it'll be nicely churned up um, and uh, and the footing will be um, not smooth shall we say um, <laughs> uh, a lot of the early obstacles are very flow through obstacles um, which basically means you know like the there's there's some barbed wire crawls there's some over unders um, you know we've got some over walls so not any of the technical difficulties just as yet um, however um, the go. first and they're away sorry Steve the elite <laughs> men are off for the 10k Spartan World Championship this is it here we go I'm so excited this is this is phenomenal actually <laughs> to see this beautiful view you see the uh, plume of dust uh, as they're leaving in their wake uh, which is magnificent Ryan Atkins uh, setting uh, a fairly blistering uh, early pace tell you and I were talking uh, just a few hours ago when we we're out on course about the um, the risk of maybe starting a little bit too quickly on this course not that Ryan's doing that right now, but take us through kind of in your mind where the risks are right now. So um, th for this course, um, a lot of viewers, uh, it looks like pretty flat ground. Uh, it, it's not. They're going to burn their legs up, pr you know, a, a huge amount. Pacing on this course is absolutely key. Some of these guys are very capable of running a just over a four minute mile. However, to keep this up on this type of terrain is going to wear the muscles down. You know, the amount of using of the stabilizing muscles, as you can see. <laughs> they're under the, the fence first, already. Yeah, they're under the fence. And here they go, Sergei Pellegrini um, heading up there. And this is where they just fight and jostle for position. This is a very important part of the race. Some people, like VJ maybe, will just be holding back. Everyone's fighting in. There is a lot more in this race than just going fast at the start. You can see uh, a really cool tower feature back there just at the bottom of your screen right now. Um, the athletes are going to sort of uh, head directly out towards uh, some sand dunes which become bigger and bigger. At the moment, this is a chance for the athletes um, to set a little bit of pace and get some kilometers under their belt. I think we saw Miguel uh, Lebranche out the front there as well. We did, yeah. I think that Sergey was just leading. He was very quick through those uh, um, over-unders, as we saw just there. And they're heading out through the dunes. The next obstacle will be barbed wire. After that will be Herkhoist. Herkhoist is... Um, is quite a heavy sandbag for the men. I think we're looking at about just shy of 100 pounds. And they'll be uh, pulling that up all the way to the top and lowering it down. And every single one of these obstacles is a good bump in the road. They have to, you know, somehow these obstacles are going to um, quicken the heart rate mm. quite massively. Um, and they just got to keep focusing in back on that running. Let's, let's talk about that just for one sec because I think that's not intuitive to many people that, mm -hmm. that the running is almost an ability for an athlete to reset themselves and, and steady their heart rate. So if you talk about road running or you know marathon running, cadence and pace is absolutely um, you know imperative that it's it stays very same. Even even a couple of um, you know a couple of seconds over um, you know can cause a blow up. And here it's very difficult to guess that cadence, to guess that pace, um, because you're, you're being stopped every so often by the terrain and also by the obstacles as they uh, head up to barbed wire here. And this is one um, obstacle that can absolutely, you know, uh, well, if you're good at this, you can gain a lot of distance, but you can, um, high, your heart rate will go through the roof. However, some people just use to go through efficiently and you lower your heart rate. Um, and, and then therefore you can run more efficient on a later, later date. So um, here we go. I think that's Ryan in third. We've got coming out, we've got Sergey. Um, and I can't quite see who that is coming out there as well with him. 
The uh, the sand obviously makes it a lot easier to, to complete barbed wire crawl. I noticed a lot of the athletes opting for the crawl uh, technique rather than the roll. I think mm-hmm. Ryan Atkins started to roll a little bit at the yep. end there. Um, yep. You know, and, and that is that is one of the benefits of running on sand. Here's one of the, of the uh, difficulties of running on sand, the churned up surface. So if you guys are wondering uh, why the course looks like that at the moment, we had the age group beast world championship this morning which was we an did. extremely exciting competition yeah uh, 10 age groups and um obviously male and female it was absolutely brilliant it was over 1500 uh races that out on the course uh even more than that i think actually with the with the open races that have gone through this course as well and we might see a couple of the uh the stragglers later as um as, as these guys will go catch them up but uh um absolute absolutely brilliant um terrain here as they're kind of uh, getting cooked on some of these like little speed bumps as i call them and they and these just become more and more familiar on this terrain as they get deeper and deeper into the dunes uh so they're just uh, uh just about to approach in probably about um a minute's time uh hurt hoist, which will uh again probably see this um lots of lead changes uh will will occur i i predict um with with a lot of these obstacles coming at this stage we have a couple of uh, uae runners also up the front um uh, labrib from uh, dubai i think at this stage it's also it's 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 pretty uh it's too early if you're watching to uh, to sort of ascertain that these guys are going to keep this pace. I, mean, I may be you, wrong, but you, you absolutely <laughs> never know. I mean, running on sand, uh, I always thought that there might be a dark horse who can come out and can run fast. Because the thing is, you know, you see this in you know snow running, and uh, you see this in in different different terrain. So. As they're approaching, um, I think it's a little, little while. As they're approaching this, um, again, we we'll talk about the high, you know, the high heart rate. Uh, you know, will we see this main pack? It's very important for the likes of Ryan Atkins and uh, you know Sergey Perlene. Perligan. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, a bit of a mouthful. I've been, I've been, I've been out in the let's, desert let's, all day. Let's call him Sergey P. Sergey, Sergey P. Or just Sergey, representing <laughs> Europe, of course. Um, look at, look at. I just have to, I just have to marvel at this. Look at the beautiful light out there in the desert. There's something so magical about the desert. If you've not been to this part of the world, I highly <laughs> recommend it. Um, I just every time I come here, it just it's awe inspiring. The way the the sun looks on the dunes, and there's just really nothing like it. Even other deserts around the world. Uh, we're so close here to the empty quarter and we're in the emirate of uh, Abu Dhabi, which is the biggest emirate uh, in this country by far. Um, and it's it's host to the, the biggest desert regions. There's uh, Ryan Atkins, I think at the bottom, bottom left of the screen who is running through. Um, Steve, right now the athletes have sort of passed the, the quote unquote easy part of the course and we're, we're getting into, we're getting into heart rate blowout te- territory. Yeah, it, it eases you into this. Uh, I think once, <laughs> once, once <laughs> you evil man, I know. Uh, so, so you'll see it come a little bit more progressive over from Hercules. Um, as they head from Hercules to Seven Foot Wall, uh, the June, the the the, um, the aggressive dunes just come um, a little bit more frequent. But it really hits home after Seven Foot Wall. Um, so they're, they're going to hit that in a little bit. As you can see, some people obviously started off a little bit too fast. And uh, you know, as, as we can see, Ryan just mitigating his pace. Ryan Shadeg coming through. And a few other uh, UAE. I think I just saw uh, Jeremy Gachet in there as well. Yes. Uh, from France. Very, very strong runner. Um, and then a few other guys that we've not seen um, uh, oh, there's, is that Miguel? Yeah, Miguel did quite well in uh, in the European chaps. That's Miguel in the white t-shirt. Um, Miguel Labrache from France. Um, as you can see, struggling a little bit here with some of these bags. But um, as we said, this really does mix it up. So we we'll see who's actually going to finish this first and run out. Herc is a, Hercules hoist is an interesting obstacle in the fact that you know it really is. Um, uh, an obstacle where where you, you, your body is stationary in the sense you're not you're not moving forward the way you are on a rig and you, you're completely changing the physiology yep. and the output of what you're doing. Um, you know this 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 is the sort of obstacle that could really break someone, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because you know uh, it's a little bit of um, power and weight. You need a little bit on this to to be able to sort of do this you know, fast and efficiently. 
Um, and um, are you a fan of throwing technique. throwing your body uh, in terms of technique here? Are you a fan of um, two feet on the fence, throwing your body down? You can see sometimes an athlete will put one foot on the fence. Sometimes I'll put two and really lean back. I like, do, like, I do, like they're like they're uh, deep sea fishing uh, uh, technique, right? Like pulling up that big fish. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, um, I, definitely one of my, you know, I, I I love this obstacle. I've sort of practiced it a lot, and something I got really efficient at is you know running in fast to an obstacle, putting a foot up. Um, onto, onto this, uh, onto the bar, and then using my weight, so I'm not just using my arms, you know, and uh, taking a couple of breaths as we did this, as you see a couple of people really struggling on this obstacle. Um, Talk and about the importance about that for a sec, Steve, in terms of um, um, sort of fatigue management, you know, whether we're at an elite level or at, um, you know, an amateur level in this sport. It's all about fatigue management, isn't it? As you, you you talk about not blowing out your arms early. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you've got constant amount. Of, they, they've got um, they've got seven foot one, and they've got twister, and then you've got Olympus, which are all arm obstacles. And uh, yeah, the 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 mitigation of making sure that you know your 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 arms and the the thing is with this, it, every, every single one of these obstacles uh, will fatigue you in a slightly different way. And, um, and, and therefore, when you're fatigued, your running gets slower. So a lot of these guys have practiced um, in lots of different forms of running with a high heart rate. And that's why, um, you know, a lot of very, very, very fast runners um, who are completely new to the sport blow up quite easily on this, um, on this kind of you know, terrain, but also with the obstacles. You're involved. saying even if they're talented runners, even if they're with. talented runners, and it takes them a little bit of practice just to be able to manage that coming into an obstacle redlined, being able to efficiently efficiently do the obstacle redlined, and then running back out. And yeah, it's it's uh, this is very very sapping part of the course, and this is literally just the beginning. As we've seen, some of the pace slow right down now into a more of a kind of nine ten minute mile pace. It's it's hard to um to sort of describe how difficult this is. Um, it, it looks a lot easier from the air than it really <laughs> is. You and I went out and ran this exact course yesterday, and I, I mean you're you're a great athlete, but um, I, I tell you what, rolling over those dunes and just the fact that it's it's kind of it's very difficult to get a consistent cadence going and that, that's what really um really challenges you when you when you're on these kind of speed bumps if you like yeah and they're and they're constant they're absolutely constant you can see some of these flat areas still soft sand, soft sand in there um and then um every one of these like little speed bumps. and again this is just gradually getting into the course <laughs> yeah, we're deep in the desert now this is one of my favorite features that, oh, well, the, oh, that, the, the old car, car. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> don't worry guys that wasn't one of ours um, <laughs> <laughs> we've had a couple of stuck vehicles uh for sure there's uh, th there's been a it's been a lot of that in the bill crew i want to do a massive shout out to uh want, you know the staff here i want to talk about that in a sec right Absolutely. now if you're, if you're wondering about the uh the uh the, the standings we've got sergey Paraligan in first ryan atkins in second and ryland shadeg currently in third gachet from france is in sixth uh and vj jones was last marked in 11th here we are back at the start line this is the elite female field and you know what i love so much about this sport steve male or female it's equally as exciting and i think i think that's why everybody is just so um so passionate about this and there's there's no there's sort of no um artificial pumping up of either men versus women and women versus men like it's just a, a great competition no matter what gender we're watching Oh, absolutely, and and I've followed these guys um, all year, and uh, you know there's some absolutely incredible athletes here, um, and I'm hoping to see her at the start line. I was a little uncertain if uh, some of these uh, athletes uh, showed up, but I think I can see her there. Is uh, one of my favourites is uh, Esther um, Hordabagiova. Um, from Slovakia and she's a very very strong runner uh, we've got Lindsay Webster who is the and that battle is going to be amazing I really can't wait to see the Esther Lindsay show uh, you know we'll, we'll see how it uh, unfolds but let's uh, Lindsay Webster your current world champion um, and then there's a couple of others in here who um, really are going to fight to get on this podium uh, Anna Duby Alyssa Petrova um, you know Chris Rogowski all have had 
phenomenal seasons. Um, you know, Alyssa came second in the uh, sp uh, at Sparta, the um, trifecta world. Andy Doobie, Andy Doobie has had an amazing season in um, in the US, and Chris Rogalski as is one of the most breakout seasons ever across multiple different sports you know decafit um high rocks uh 100 mile races uh world's toughest mudder um you know she's the world's toughest mudder champion and she did 100 miles first ever woman to do 100 miles of world's toughest mudder phenomenal athlete she's going to come out here you know she said oh 10k is not really my sport but she is strong and she's powerful and what we're going to see a little bit later on in both races um is this you know powerful running come through um, as we're back with the men's on on this wonderful, uh, you know, deep into the dunes now. Wait, waiting to come out of the shadow there is that is, I think it, we've got Ryan Atkins in first place. Yeah. Um, followed by Sergey Paraligan and, and Obeid Al Noemi from the United Arab Emirates is currently ticking along in, in third. Ryan Shadeg in fourth. Ryan's got that um, fairly familiar um, trademark running style, you know, even in even in silhouette, you can sort of um, absolutely. I think that's Rylan just uh, just coming over um, the the top of the dunes here, and this is where we're really going to see it sort of play out now. Uh, this is a very key aspect, and we can see some of the stronger um, you know obstacle course racers just making their way to the start, uh, making their way to the you know the the front of the race, and. Uh, you know, making sure that they are um, in a great position because it's going to end. It's going to end pretty fast, but they've got a lot of sand to go. I'm going to bet you the beverage of my choice. You have to give me a podium for the women's field. Three, two, one. Um, <laughs> all right, my, podi my podium is um, Esther Hodobagiova, uh, Lindsay Webster, Alyssa Petrova. I like your picks. There you go. We'll see. <laughs> All right, here we are. Steve, take us through it. Mr. Atkins on Twister. So Twister, um, as they're grabbing the um, as they're grabbing the handles, they slightly twist. It's just a two bay. No one needs to go near the uh, penalty loop, and off they go. So the Sergey, and this happened in Lewa. I remember this battle very, very 2021. well. Twenty twenty one, absolutely. Twenty twenty one, Lewa twenty twenty one at the last World Championship. It was. It was uh, Sergey versus Ryan Atkins, <laughs> and uh, that battle was immense. And that's a battle that's gone on for many years, by the way. Yeah, we, sh we should I've talk about the history of this battle because, absolutely. you know, both athletes coming from different parts of the world, Ryan always competing mm. uh, in North America. So they don't really meet each other apart from these special occasions at World Champions. However, our dark horse Ryland Shadeg beat Sergey in Greece. So he came over and he beat Sergey in Let's give three, people a bit, of context, a bit of context about so, all these championships that we're talking about. Yeah, so um, the Trifecta World Championships, um, that was in Greece. What an absolute amazing show that was. Um, just, you know, and Esther Holt uh, Bagheera, who we're going to see there, absolutely destroyed that. Mm. Um, so you start off with a, a sprint. Uh, it's 5K. Yeah, it's, uh, and your time, to, so it's cumulative time. Uh, start with the 5K. Um, and then the next day is the 10k, and then the uh, the um, the beast is at the end. And half how marathon. It yeah, it's half marathon. It's a lot of race. It's, a, it's a lot of competing across one weekend, isn't it? It is, but however, it's very exciting because then they 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 go off. A, basically, it's like a stage race, so they cumulative time. Mm. Then they get set off. So if they have a two minute advantage, they he they head off two minutes uh, out out in front. If, if if it is really quite unique in in all sports, the uh, the trifecta. World Championship, and for everybody watching from from uh, from the brutal. Spartan world, oh, of yeah. course it's brutal as well. If you, if you haven't been out there, rack up a trifecta in 2023 and get yourself to Sparta. Like, by the way, it's it's got a great atmosphere. Um, but what what's so cool about about mm. all these championships is they're all so very very different. I mean, here in in uh, in Abu Dhabi, I mean, it's just the festival. I mean, we haven't we haven't seen uh, the festival uh, in this broadcast yet, but a be beautiful sort of Bedouin carpets oh. and tents and lamps and all this sort of stuff around it's the whole amazing. place. It's amazing. It looks like a Bedouin setting in the middle of the desert, which yeah. it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and we it's have like this amazing, amazing festival here, as we just saw Ryland Shadeg in in fourth place. Uh, just, just catching up with third place there. Talk about, um, talk about. Let's talk about, um, about strength. 
you know in the in the in the sort of scientific physiological uh, perspective you know um you know it's in terms of running um and then and then strength and endurance particularly in the legs with the sand talk about the importance of that because you and i had a really good discussion about that off air absolutely and um i i think as you can see these guys are as they're walking up it's not a it's not a flat surface you know it's a couple of feet up and then you slip down again and you you're constantly using your stabilizing muscles so a lot of these who have practiced you know flat running trail running even um it's usually on fairly gradable surface so some of these guys might blow up pretty easily due to the fact that they haven't trained their stabilizing muscles i know that ryan atkins and rylan shadeg and and folks like that ha and sergey have been running a lot in the snow uh they're running a lot in in um off trail which really trains these stabilizing muscles strong legs uh, strong ankles and um, be, as we can see VJ um, Jones just uh, sort of moving v up in there. VJ currently in 12th uh, with Ryan Atkins really I mean his strength over extreme terrain and extreme distances is what makes this guy just an incredible athlete doesn't it? Yeah absolutely and uh, um, I th you know, going back to that comparison of running in the snow right Ryan's done a lot of that recently and as he's going through um, you know, running in this sand and the soft sand where you don't really know what your next foot in is gonna bring. And that's exactly, you know, I, I, I live in Tahoe, so I run a lot in the snow. So I kind of, it was very familiar for, to me. For folks watching who maybe, maybe <laughs> um, you know, particularly in North America, uh, maybe a little bit more familiar with snow. How similar is snow and, and sand? It is. I mean, is. I mean, maybe, no, I'm not talking about beach running here. I'm no. talking about full desert sand. I mean, what are the similarities? So, you know, I, I think what it is, you never know what you, what step that you're going to take because running in snow, you, you know, you don't quite know what the surface, you don't know how... Um, far you're going to like post hole through mm. um, and then you are training those stabilizing muscles and it's 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 different from running on trail it's different from running on road because you know exactly what you you know you you know what your body's going to you know turn over so therefore um, you know, as, these, as Sergey is making a move on Ryan Atkins, uh -huh. um, I think these guys are going to probably work together a little bit but uh, in what sense Steve? Um, so they know they've got a very strong field behind them. They're going to probably pack together a little bit. Um, I'm not sure they're going to attack each other just yet in terms of trying to make a break. So we come to um, Olympus. So they're just going to like run together. Olympus, um, hands only, feet are not allowed on there as Ryan <laughs> again makes perfect. Ooh, where's Sergey? There. Exactly. <laughs> so going back to obstacle proficiency, yeah. um, you know, we just saw small obstacle like Olympus Let's say two seconds on each obstacle. Mm. There's 28 obstacles. There's 25 for easy maths. Mm. Okay. We're talking about almost a minute. Mm. We're talking about a minute on just being efficient like that. And a minute in running is absolutely massive. So we know that Ryan and, um, you know, even Sergey, but we, as we saw there, that was a two second difference. A little bit of a laugh, too, from Ryan yeah, yeah, there yeah. To, our, uh, to our camera buggy. <laughs> this guy's just next level. I mean, he's, he's so relaxed. Um, yet, like his heart rate right now, Steve. What do you think? He's somewhere in the one. Oh, I think they'd be close to close to redlining. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I I think so. But the thing is, it's like they built up such a massive engine, especially doing a lot of these cross sports. How do you think Sergey's looking right now? A little a little fatigue compared so to Ryan, possibly. Body, body language. Uh, I I know that Sergey kind of runs a bit like that, but you know, it's head down. Mm. Um, you know, a little bit uh, hunched over. Arms start rising a little bit when um, you know you want to keep your kind of body nice and uh, relaxed by lowering your arms. The higher the arms are, you can see the... the Ryan grabbing a little tight. nutrition there, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And you will need you know, need this, although it's only a 10K. Um, we, we are, you know, possibly Did looking at... Uh, you know, Again, different kettle of fish. Hour. 
different kettle of fish, right? Well, that's it. So the yeah. the length of time that these athletes are out there an yep. hour as opposed to a 10K on, on the track or on the road <laughs> or even a 10K on a relatively um, easier obstacle racing venue, you know, for, for example, if it was kind of like rolling um, rolling hills over, over you know, um, uh, hard compacted mud or, or grass. It's, just, it's a sort of different story out there now, isn't it? So it is. I mean, look, I mean, they're, they're running uh, in a, um, for, like, they're running about nine minute mile pace just now and you can just kind of see their uh you know shuffle 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 trying to keep as light as possible because the it's heavier the you the heavier you run on this yeah the more you sink into the sand so you can see this technique of ryan short steps just kind of as flat-footed as you possible. need that turnover don't you on the sand you do yeah absolutely you can see both of them in uh, in some gators as well how, how important are the gators out there uh, it's incredibly important um stop it stop sand a lot of the downhill on the sand and you you found that the other day was just like you're loading your shoe through and, and what actually happens to the sand it gets compacted in you can get blisters but also what it does is you know end up at the front and make it shorter and uncomfortable and you know um just n not nice to run yeah um, ryan atkins about 40 plus seconds uh with sergey uh ahead of third place right now um talking about the sand out here it's uh you know what surprises a lot of people is just how fine it is you know and, and i think um <laughs> You, you really don't find that anywhere else, um, not even, I mean, in the Sahara or other areas yep. like this. The, the, the sand in this part of the world is known to be a bit like talcum powder, and yep. and that that uh, also um, adds to the difficulty and that, that sinking um, as, as the athletes are making their way through the course. Here's the women getting ready to start. You can see race director Garfield Griffiths also giving them their briefing. Um, oh man, I mean, <laughs> we're, about to, we're about to have two concurrent high-level, world-class races through the desert in Abu Dhabi. This I mean, is I'm so here, I'm, here ne I'm, I'm here next year in the commentary position. I'm kind of it's fairly much itching to get out there right now. <laughs> Would you mind if I leave and go jump in the buggy? Off, right? off, off you go, mate. I know. Um, my, my, usual, my usual position is chasing these guys around, and it's like one of the things I absolutely love to do. So I, I am definitely having a few withdrawal symptoms, knowing the buzz of what happens when you're absolutely, you know, it's hearing hearing the breathing yeah. and, and see, seeing the athletes like really, really attack this. And... And one one thing, you know, just go, going back to the men's field before we concentrate on the women's uh, very soon is, um, you know, body language is just such a key thing. We saw Ryan have a quick, like, glance over to the, you know, like, just a little bit. He's just showing. Showing Sergey. He's showing Sergey that he is in charge and he is relaxed. And, um, uh, and that's good for his, you know, that mind, uh, that mindset as well. Um, they are they are actually making moves on um, third play, third and fourth place, and uh, um, again, this was this working together kind of thing, just just making sure that that gap goes. Um, we are also uh, just before the start here, we're we're sort of um, seeing that VJ Jones is quite a, a fair way back in the pack. I mean, it's hard to tell right now um, yep. what he's experiencing without really talking to it. What, what, do, you, what do you think? Uh, what do you think's the story with with VJ? So VJ, um, in in my book, very very strong runner. He's always done extremely well on the flatter, faster races. Um, th this is more comparison um, to a mountain race. So we we know that um, he did very well in Big Bear, and um, you know he's he's done well at mountain races. I'm not sure his preparation has been um, mountain orientated. Mm. So this is kind of um, you know the, we're talking about the same times as they're gonna uh, have in the Big Bear Be uh, Big Bear Super, rather than uh, they had at San Luis Obispo where he you know where he won. Um, so preparation would have been, you know, like key preparation as in what the, the replica, uh, what this was, it was very difficult to train for because nobody quite knew what the terrain was out here. And that's the beauty of Spartan. You never quite know what you're getting. Um, uh, very, very strong athlete. I think we'll still see a bit of a finish when other people will, um, I, I would hope that he would, uh, search for a, uh, a podium spot, um, uh, I'm still hoping for a top five. He's still women in my are top away. Five. Sorry, Stevie. Women are away, and they are going to barrel straight out of the festival, down into the scrub, and uh, under that low crawl in, in just a, you know about 30 seconds' time. 
and uh, both races are away now. We're live here in Abu Dhabi, 2022 Spartan World Championship, hosted by Abu Dhabi Sports Council. I couldn't be more excited to be here, Steve, oh, in this, the desert. This is amazing. And, and so names to watch, guys. They've got Lindsay Webster, our current world champion, who really, really wants it. Uh, she, she said that last year that she was going to retire, and here she is. She's still, <laughs> still out here. And, it's you called know, the she, Tom Brady effect. I know. She wants to retain her title. Now, Esther um, Hodebagiova is going to be um, right hot on her tail, if not wanting to lead this off, um, as she has done in recent races. They haven't met um, this year. I believe. So this would be a fantastic um, showdown, isn't that I a, believe. Isn't that a great thing about um, about Spartan obstacle racing, that there's kind of like these different worlds that are sort of existing um, throughout the year, you know, with the European races and the elite scene yeah. and then North America, of course. And they a all great competition in the United States. Come together in this amazing um, world championship. Come together and, and meet, you know, the sort of the old foes and the old battles. And we've seen those those battles evolve over time as the women's elite field um, comes uh, under the first crawl. Um, Alyssa you, Petrova you see in first Alyssa place. Alyssa Petrova, who stamped her name very firmly uh, onto the history books last year in, in the Lewa Desert of uh, uh, absolutely. UAE. Absolutely. And um, also this year, just um, close behind, she took to, uh, second place in the European Champs, which was a beast course in uh, Pippenford Park in England. Pippenford Park, old boy. Absolutely. Uh, what a great. <laughs> Course, that one. Try saying that five times fast. Oh, I can. I'm British. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Annie Doobie is uh, right up there as well, and she is really, um, uh, again, another uh, breakout athlete uh, from last year, and uh, she's certainly put her stamp this year on the um, the U.S. National Series. Uh, Chris Rogalski, who we talked about as well, she's going to be right up there. Rose Wetzel, Yanka Poprova, and. Uh, um, Eureka Everson, who is um, uh, going to be a factor in the top 10 for Yanka, sure. Yanka Popova and Sergey train together a lot, don't they? And um, uh, Sorry, not Yanka Popova. Um, Alyssa. Alyssa yeah. Petrova yeah, and yep. uh, yeah, Sergey. They're a great Probably. couple. They're another power couple. So they'll they're be, they're be fighting for the... Uh, the across the pond power couple. Uh, yeah, exactly, of the, uh, of the Canadians. Ryan, um, uh, Ryan Atkins and Lindsay yes, Webster, absolutely. of course, we're referring to. and. And uh, that's the great thing about this sport, you know. It's um, it's it's uh, uh, you know, becoming bigger and bigger, and and sort of growing in its um, popularity around the world. But at the same time, it's a really tight knit and exciting community uh, for everybody to to sort of witness around the world. And that's what I love about it. You know, we're yep. we're, we're a relatively small team. You know, this is um. <laughs> This is a, a relatively new sport, and, and you know there's so many incredible people working on it around the world. You know, not just at Spartan, of course, but you know this weekend uh, the races are sanctioned by World Obstacle, yep. and we're we're so happy to have uh, you know the president here, Ian Adamson, with us, and and all the hard work by the national federations around the world. I just want to shout out to to all the national federations and the work that they're doing yep. for the sport, and and super excited for 2023 when Spartan and and, and World Obstacle, you know, collaborating on on sanctioned more races i mean steve that the future's oh, bright it's it is it's phenomenal and we've got new athletes as we see uh them going under barbed wire as we speak now but uh lots of new athletes coming in and you know we've got this uh uh 3k race uh, next year and we've got more of these 10k races and we've got more beast races and uh we're gonna see the know. 3k tomorrow in action too guys yes, watch, watch the all the action race. on yeah watch all the action on spartan socials um there will be a uh, a, a team world championship that takes place over the the 3k distance which is a 1k loop course a little bit of a preview for everybody uh, around the world of what's to come in uh, in 2023 as the elite female field makes their way under the barbed wire um, getting down quite a few times seven to be exact or eight if you count barbed wire crawl on this course <laughs> and that you know what that does is it can't be underestimated the the, the moving from that that um that upright running position and getting flat on your stomach yep. requires a lot of energy burn doesn't it yep lots of but just constant bumps in the road which will just knock the pace off and uh you know we're talking about strength of the athlete you know the it's not just the running it's not just the leg speed it's the strength of just constantly um you know up and down these dunes and making sure that you're sure-footed constantly uh you know as you can see 
thousands of feet have already just gone through this. <laughs> it's an incredible. I was just, just going to say, what a beautiful, <laughs> just incredible, uh, incredible images we're getting from the team out there. Great, great work by our team flying the drones around and driving around the buggies. We can't underestimate how difficult it is out there too, Steve. You've been out setting this championship course yourself in the in the buggy, and you know we've uh, we've been enjoying some drives through the dunes. It's um, it's not simple, is it, putting on a, a race of this length, you know, with a, with a, with an age group championship over yep. a half marathon and a 10k. I mean, it's not like sort of wandering around to, uh, to you know, to through the streets of of, a, of an urban environment and putting some signs out. It's a little bit more difficult than that. Uh, we we we've had the most incredible um, build cycle, um, and it's been really, really, really fun uh with the with the crew here uh we've had uh, it's been a very international feel what are the what are the challenges steve you're putting on a race um in, in a place like this in in abu dhabi so um you know as, as i said we've got lots of people coming from all other um you know um countries you know we've got a, a bit of the british team here we've got some you European mean behind the scenes here right? behind so, the scenes yeah. yeah uh we've got we've got a um we've got a big US contingency and uh, you know we all come together we haven't actually physically worked together as one team um, and so um, many languages many three, different ideas exactly but uh, you know it's just been this fantastic and obviously with the World Cup going on as well it's just been this great atmosphere if everybody watching in the I've, evening. Had to, I've had to try yeah exactly I've, I've had to try and um, force Steve to go to bed of an evening especially if England's playing this mate I've, I've, I've been up watching all of them I, I might be a bit bit tired but uh, I, I love the World Cup it's you keep it's telling me you're tired spot. and now I know why exactly I know <laughs> you too many bad beers as well anyway <laughs> I'm British. No, um, that's okay. Let, 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 yeah, exactly. We've got to call it as it is. No, look, but I think... I, yeah, go on. Challenges for, for, for this race. That's what I'm interested in. I mean, you know, because there's a lot of equipment needed to put on it. Oh, race. boy. Oh, boy. I mean, we're like talking, we're talking forklifts. We're yep. talking telehandlers. We're talking trucks. Tons yep. and tons of equipment. In the middle of Abu Dhabi. In the middle you know, of, of the desert of Abu Dhabi. We've got some fantastic members of staff. Some of our members of staff who work in the UK actually speak Arabic. They come over. They've, they've helped us with a lot of the fix in like you know um there's, there's a ton of guys host race stevens has really really helped you know uh and obviously garfield griffiths um has headed up this you know phenomenal team um and then just like you know you've been in the planning process of this for a while of just planning you know where the course is going to go where the obstacle is going to be set and then it's just, just setting sort of them up there sort of starts as a dream you know like uh, we send you know a small team out and and when we we sort of we start with a blank canvas. We yeah, actually we, yeah. we love to get out on foot and we yeah. start to think about you know athletically what's going to make the best course. And this particular course, I think, what really makes it different for everybody watching that was lucky enough to be at the 2021 World Championship in, in the Lewa Desert, you know, a few hours south of where we are now. Um, I would say that this course has more variety. You know, right now we're seeing stunning, stunning shots of the dunes, but you know um, what Lewa uh, didn't have was the sort of um, uh, the, the scrub. Uh, running and it didn't have as many sort of short rolling dunes it had big towering dunes but here it's this these, these speed bumps that we so talk about they're quite different you're very, lower but yeah but, but evil in a different some way very interesting um data has come back from uh some of the finishing times um of the uh, of the age group earlier on today for the beast have actually oh, yeah. quite a lot of them have who had raced in Lewa have been slower times believe it or not is than right? the Lewa race uh which is which is quite surprising but as we're looking at this terrain it's just constantly wearing because there is there is not even a salt flat to be seen there isn't any um, right. You know, There's no respite of the salt. No, flats. where you can kind of run a real like, you know, as we can see, quite a lot of um, you know open races like going going through. So, so, so tell us about that, Steve. So so Ryan Atkins in the lead there, Sergey Paraligan right on his heels. Those two guys are currently in the men's elite field. Jeremy Gachet is in third, and Obaid Obaid Al Noemi from the UAE is currently in fourth. Um, the, you mentioned open races. Um, you know, if, if, uh, let's let's get a little bit technical for a sec for all the fans watching. Maybe maybe there's some people throwing uh, uh, popcorn at the screen right now. Why are they out there? But uh, just explain uh, the situation. Yeah. So uh, our last piece um, heat went off at uh, you know 12 o'clock, and it uh, they're doing the. Uh, 
Um, Watch your the foot 13, there, Ryan, by the way. <laughs> the <laughs> He's the on the tape. The 13.5 mile, um, mile beast course. So they're still out there. They're still trying to, uh, you know, complete their, complete, complete their course. Um, I don't think the, anyone has to worry, though, right, in, ter- in terms of throughput. There was, there was oh, quite absolutely nice, not. Quite no, a nice plan in place. Uh, so um, the, pla- the plan in place was uh, they, they've got, they, they will have lanes uh, always free. Um, uh, as we've got, who have we got? We've got Lindsay Webster, Alyssa Petrova is there, Esther Hod- uh, Hodzabagiova in the, in the <sighs> and Annie Doobie. Annie Doobie. So look front. at this four. Oh, this is just an, inc- <laughs> this is, this is an incredible, uh, incredible four athletes in, in sport. And, you know, um, especially if you're new to, to watching this, um, I cannot emphasize enough that, uh, yeah, maybe people will um, will think that I'm, I'm I'm saying this just because you know I work work here in the sport. But these ladies and these men, indeed, are world class athletes. You know, by anybody's standard. I mean, I, I think we can firmly say, and you look at the the sort of pace and the athleticism of these women and these men out there. This is world class athleticism on display. I, I feel very strongly about that. Oh, absolutely world class, you know. And we 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 we've, we've known that from you know we've got Lindsay Webster, who is your current um, sky running world champion. So sky running is uh, you know mountain running in the trail running world, and so you have <laughs> world trail cha- running. And, but harder <laughs> but but tra- tra- <laughs> running but in <laughs> real mountains yeah yeah um so sky running involves a lot of like ridge running and it's a it's a it's an amazing skill set which is uh v- you know can can transfer over to ocr very uh fluidly um because mm. of the the terrains that we set these courses in uh you know like the utah races and the tahoe races and um you know, like the the Vermonts, you know, very sky running esque, mm-hmm. um, and and th- and this terrain is is no different. So if we can see uh, um, Sergey hanging on in there, it's not intuitive though, is it? You know, um, for a lot of people that do race in the mountains, because um, you know, I, I guess <coughs> mountain environments are a little bit more common than than running through full. I mean, sand deserts. You know, yep. like that's not not that common. I mean, there's some great great races around the world, of course. This being yep. one of them in a sand desert, and you can look at you know stage ultras like Marathon de Sable or yep. something like that. Absolutely. But, but they're not. They're definitely not as common. But I, I think it's I think it's very interesting that you point out the similarities because on face value, mountains and deserts couldn't really seem. Uh, further apart but athletically speaking the, the similarities mm. are, are there yeah and, and and just saying that that's you know that's the skill set that someone like Lindsay has someone like Alyssa Petrova has um you know and uh and and Esther and Esther's body language a little bit earlier there was just like she was just she wanted the pace to be a little bit quicker you could see her just behind Annie Doobie going come on come on come on shall I make a move and she's holding back uh which is kind of encouraging um, you know, obviously for her because she knows in her head that she she could go out faster. It's interesting. And she's holding back a yeah. little bit. Yeah, and even over the ten k distance, you know, uh, um, because of the difficulty of the terrain, um, taking that approach that you'd probably usually apply in a race of a, of a longer length, like a twenty one k piece, yeah, um, is 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 paramount to success out here. You can't just get out and redline and hope for the best. No, I've absolutely not. And as we uh, uh, just see Sergey approaching the um, Mabadola mile, um, oh. it was a mile segment. We should talk about this little yes. mile segment. Yeah. It's, around, it's around an incredible um, uh, lake here that has uh, native bird life, and, and uh, everybody racing this weekend takes part in the Mabadola mile. Um, you know, some prizes and stuff um, for the fastest athletes. The ladies uh, making their way into the <laughs> rolling section as we join Sergey Paraligan and his quest yep. to try and take out a Spartan World Championship. Yeah, and this is the fastest part of the course, you know, um, as they as he will be approaching Atlas. So the fastest part of the course is Atlas through to zigzag walls, and you'll see, um, you know, you'll see the pace increase here um, uh, before they get back into some of the grueling sand running, um, you know, just after rope climb. Let's talk about the conditions right now. Uh, the age group world championship took place at about 9.20 a.m. local cool. time this morning. They were in the heat of it. Mate, it got hot. <laughs> but... Uh, Right now, I think 
you know, as far as um, conditions go, it's it's December. Um, you know, this is winter in the desert in Abu Dhabi, and, and certainly um, from here it gets a little bit cooler through January. But the the sun is starting to set over the desert. I mean, this is literally as good as it gets for conditions, isn't it? Oh, it's absolute! This is my favourite time of being out here. You know, setting course at this time. The you know the the heat of the day is gone. Um, you know, the sun is absolutely beautiful, as we can see right This is great footage. I mean, I'm just really excited by this, and we're looking at an Atlas carry. Um, so right Sergey's now. just ahead of Ryan Atkins right now as he just goes on there as, as we see Ryan Atkins approaching. Ryan's so probably about 10, you know, 10, seconds. 10 seconds or so. So Sergey has really made a move in that, that section. As we can see, Ryan maybe getting a couple of seconds back here on Sergey. Um, as you can see him just going around the pole. You remember the, um, for everybody, you know, uh, watching that maybe it's been a while since you've done a Spartan race. Um, uh, the, the difference now is, uh, the, you know, the Atlas carry, you, you grab the stone, you make your way around the flag and you get straight back. There's no need to, to complete burpees or something on one side of the flag. And no, I really mandatory. Yeah, and I, re I sort of really enjoy um, a faster Atlas carry. I think it kind of, um, it lends itself to a bit of, uh, you know, nice, nice strength and endurance sort of uh, uh, competition. Yeah. Yeah, again, it's just another obstacle just to kind of heighten that, heighten that uh, heart rate and then back straight into running again. And we're seeing world-class athletes here who know how to manage that. It's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? In a sport like this, I mean, if we compare um, sports like uh, like football, and uh, you know, perhaps American football or, you know, baseball or motor sports, where there's a lot of equipment, you know, you look at something like this and you sort of think that things are really stripped back and pure, but there really is still a lot of technicality aren't there and I mean with the scientist on screen Ryan Atkins he's got the glucose monitor on the arm he's got the, the watch he's checking with all the data uh, from his body and heart rate tracking he's got his gaiters on there um, he's, you know, even everything down to the type of shades he's wearing everything's kind of really dialed in um, and you can see Sergey Perligan with some some strapping on the back, some tape there. And for, for folks watching, perhaps that are you know getting into the sport or, or trying to find the next leg up, you know, can you tell us a little bit about the, these tricks that the athletes are putting in place, like you know the use of uh, athletic tape in, in certain areas? Like what, what 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 would you recommend to people who are watching that they can try and try and do to emulate these guys? <laughs> well, um, you know, it's as you can see, it's very um, it's very methodical, and uh, you know. Ser Sergey knows his body well. Um, you know he's got he's got um, bits and you know bits and bobs of going on with like you know strains and stuff, and that's where he tapes. He knows exactly what's going on. But the thing is, you know his, his shoes, his shorts, his his running watch, everything's been practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. You know, same with Ryan. He practices. You know, taking goo out and um, you know e e fueling. So. Nothing that he has done on this race has been brand new. You know, the gaiters that he's worn, he's worn before. The shoes that he's worn in has been, you know, has been modified and made for this exact, you know, race. Uh, his glucose is, you know, is his glucose monitor is, is like he knows exactly where he's at because he trains and he practices with that. You know, he's got a headband, so he practices with his headband, so he knows how that feels at a high tempo rate. It's incredible, like, is it, for most for most folks who are probably, you know, like... Everything is <laughs> like... The, the, the closest they get by, we put the shoes near the front door on no, uh, no, Friday no. night before heading out to, uh, to a race on Saturday morning. But you know, that's what it takes to win a world championship at an elite level in, yep. in obstacle racing at Spartan. Oh, this battle was incredible. Ryan, as he made his way around the lake, you know, you could see him looking off to his sort of um, to his two o'clock towards Sergey. You could see actually Ryan starting to try to uh, up the tempo a little bit there on the flat. This is the place to do it as they head out of the lake area. Around that lake, it was about as uh, compacted and, and flat as it gets on this course now. And they're heading back towards the festival where we are right now. You can see the sun setting in the distance and the guys have got about three kilometers left. Yeah, and just behind them has been some really interesting, um, you know, uh, changes in the in the position. We've got uh, Take us through it, Steve. Jeremy Gachet, who's a phenomenal athlete. He's 44 years old and he's French. Um, Does that surprise? Pause on that. Does it surprise you? I mean, certainly no, because I've seen I've seen him at. Uh, he didn't do so well in the European Championships, but he did incredibly well in Greece, and he was right up there at the front. Um, and uh, this is his kind of territory. You know, it's tough 
gritty run in. So I'm not surprised that he he has kind of come forward in this and is going to do well. For, for age though, in obstacle racing, for everybody, you know, maybe they they're used to watching, um, you know, a marathon at an elite level like Elia Kipchoge, you know, uh, pushing forty. Yep. Um, you know, do you think in obstacle racing we're looking at a slightly younger? Um, age range for an athlete to hit their peak than say versus road marathon running or would you say it's similar because it's an endurance sport in that sense with long distance elements i think the longer the distance i think the age can kind of go up a little bit uh for sure especially into sort of like you know ultra running i think when you're at shorter distances i think um i think it's still on the whole on the whole uh yeah, I think it's the younger, you know, the younger guys. As we can this see is, them on the zigzag this wall. This is the zigzag wall. This is a new obstacle. Um, getting a little preview. You start off with a kind of a bar hand hold. You move around a regular Z wall, which has got a lot of rock climbing holds, and wooden, wooden blocks, and then onto ropes at the end. Mate, the did you go giant? Did, did you spray? <laughs> did you spray those bells there with some kind of growth hormone? What's going on? <laughs> Look at the size well, of the bell. <laughs> this, this, is, this is this is what happens when you order a bell and uh, you haven't quite worked out. Um, the dimensions, uh, you, you know, there's metric and imperial, ah, and it. then there's Abu Dhabi, um, <laughs> uh, and, and so they, some, like, some, they like the, the four <laughs> foot uh, diameter. So bell. sometimes, sometimes they don't quite know the measurements Love of it. the gas. So we can certainly anyway, tell if they hit it or not, or maybe um, it can't. It barely moves. <laughs> we, we 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 ordered them and they came, and uh, the, yeah, we, we all had a good laugh about it. that one. But uh, again, that's you know, it's a collector's item. Race. Keep your eye on eBay if you want to I get one. Right. <laughs> Ryan um, Atkins now in front of Sergey Paraligan. Guys, if you're watching this, this is Ryan. Just have a quick glance over his left shoulder. There it is again. I mean, this is where it. This is where you oh. start to really put it on the line, right? There's you, you've got to. Well, you, I mean, even with two and a bit k to go, you've still got to manage your fuel in the tank because you you could still blow out at this stage. But if yeah. you're going to lay it down now, if you're going to put the throttle down, now's the time. Uh, straight after rope climb, it is where you. You know, is it turn it up as it were? And I, what we just saw there is the obstacle proficiency. Ryan Atkins was that two, three seconds quicker. Like Sergey has really been the better runner on on this. As well, we you've can seen see, it now. See, Look see at this going on this, and yep. then this is where the battle is. But watch rope climb. Maybe equal, maybe a couple of seconds. We've got bucket t carry coming right after. Take this. us through the next couple of Woo! next couple of obstacles. Steve. Yeah, so um, they, they've just they've just finished this little mile um, with the mother dollar mile, and then they're going to come straight into rope climb here. After rope climb, they're going to hit bucket carry. Not the longest bucket carry, but definitely somewhere to make a little bit of difference. Again, we're talking about those couple. Let's of watch seconds. the technique. Here they go. They grab onto the rope pretty much at the same time. Ryan Atkins. Oh, look at that. Three, four, four, five <laughs> seconds ahead, but uh, Sergey then uh, dropped off pretty quick. I mean, in terms of obstacle proficiency, Steve Ryan is like one of the best there is. He is, and Sergey, Sergey's right up there as well. I think um, you know uh, we're gonna we're gonna see this really interesting battle, and and Ryan has studied the map. He knows exactly in his head when he's gonna turn the key as it's it were. been out here for about seven weeks kevin look, <laughs> i'm joking not not quite that long but he has been out here for a, quite a bit you know acclimatizing getting yeah, used to and it I think that's, feeling for it yeah what you got to remember is that sergey lives in dubai as well um so he um not as well but he lives in dubai mm. and he is used to this sort of sand running and uh trained in this heat as well let's what give, an interesting battle i can't let's, wait to let's go give an update on the positions right now sergey paraleague and ryan atkins battling for the men's 2022 spartan world championship title that's who you're watching right now jeremy gachet is in third uh bringing up uh, uh, for about oh it's about six minutes actually behind ryan and sergey uh, and then in the women's field stevie yeah, absolutely. Lindsay, Esther, and Alyssa all uh, all battling it out there, and I kind of like I, that's. It's actually. I think that's my. Uh, it, it's very close in the women's field right now. Lindsay Webster at the last time we met was two seconds um, in front of Esther Hortabagiova. Yep. So really nothing going there. So and I think then, that uh, pack Alyssa of Petrova four right behind. Yeah, absolutely. I think we see that pack of four. 
Um, you know, really, really working the, the, hard. The pack of four being uh, Annie Doobie as well. Yeah, Annie Doobie as well. Yeah, so Alyssa, Esther, and Lindsay. Bucket um, carry, and uh, as you say, it's not the most, uh, it's not the longest bucket carry or the steepest. But after what these athletes have been through, with the up and the down and the up and yep. the down and the feet slipping and sliding all it's over the place, still a couple of minutes. This is more than enough, isn't it, to get to get that heart rate yep. right back up into the red zone. Yep. You can see Ryan Atkins and Sergey Paraligan battling it out with just, uh, you know, not that long to go before the finish line. A, a couple of K right now uh, at most. Um, actually, slightly less from the bucket carry. I think, Steve, they're about 1.8, maybe about a mile, just over a mile from the finish. They are not far from the finish at all as we see this battle going on. And uh, I think um, <laughs> having a little bit of uh, sort of... You know, chat going on. I can definitely <laughs> see some. Did you see that? I, I was. I, I missed that. What, what, what do you think's being said out there? Uh, think? That, I think there's a little bit of uh, sand possibly being spilt out of Ryan's bu bucket, maybe. Hmm. And uh, there was a bit of oh, what's going on here? But uh, nothing to um, give Ryan an advantage for this, for sure. No, I mean um, we, we can see it pretty clearly there. I think there's there's uh, no compromise on the bucket. Um, you can see the the weight of those buckets is um, is no joke as the as the two lead men elite field runners uh, drop their buckets and now Steve next obstacle uh, next obstacle they're back onto the barbed wire carry and then onto the Bedouin carry so um, nothing nothing to really trip them up as uh, Bedouin carry the Bedouin say carry say what say what <laughs> take us through it exactly no you don't <laughs> give us a little a preview you can give us a little preview before we get uh, there it's just a little jug. Um, <laughs> little jug, it's little like four, jug. five foot it tall. Is, it is a massive, <laughs> massive jug. It's a Bedouin jug where they pick it up and they carry it like an Atlas carry. Jeez, um, remind me not to go to the not to go to the pub with you, mate. When you order a jug, <laughs> jeez, I hope it's not one of these. We'll wait till you guys see it. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a giant vase. Maybe is the word. It's for fantastic. It. So they take it backwards and forwards and then uh, carry on. But look at this absolute beautiful, beautiful weather uh, that we have in, and it's cooled down nicely. These guys. We'll still feel the heat for sure. As you're watching right now, sunset is about 35 minutes away. It is at um, 5:30 here at local time. So you know, perfect conditions for the uh, for the men's elite field to finish. And then you know, I think right on that uh, on that sunset point, we should see the uh, the women's elite field uh, come in across the finish line. Uh, reigning world champion Lindsay Webster, and also the partner of Ryan Atkins, who's competing right now on your screen for first place. Uh, she's in first place in the women's field Esther Horta Bagiova uh, still in second and Annie Doobie now has moved up into third position in the women's field with Alyssa Petrova hot on her heels oh this is fantastic so I'm hoping that we're going to really see a strong uh, finish um and as we're following, is that can quite see I, who that was? I actually thought that yet. was that was Miriam Gillo Bosset, but I uh, think you mentioned she yeah, won't be competing this weekend. Unfortunately, she's not competing this uh, this weekend. Um, but we will sure to be catching up with the women. Sergey Paraliga and under the fence. This will be pretty much the last time the guys uh, get onto the ground, right? Yeah, they've got a couple more um, uh, fence crossings. But, uh, yeah, they'll be very quickly back into the sandbag. So let me take you through the finish because it's kind of quite exciting. Um, uh, their next obstacle after the Bedouin carry will be rope climb into dunk wall into sandbag carry. And then they're back into the festival area where we've got slip wall and we've got spear throw. You say rope climb? Uh, no, sorry, uh, um, slip wall. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just so uh, monkey yeah. bars. There's no double rope climb. No folks. double rope yeah. climb. Not, not <laughs> that would like, be cool, uh, but like, no. Not like uh, where was it? It was in Sparta in Greece where they had um, uh, for the sprint they had a rope climb into mm. a sandbag carry. The sandbag in the sandbag carry you had a rope climb and then picked up the sandbag <laughs> carry again and went on again. Good old, uh, good old Thomas Blanc and his madness. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to Thomas, of course, one of our great uh, French race, race directors, directors who uh, who makes his way around the world and uh, yeah puts on yeah. Uh, quite a tough course. As you're watching Sergey Paraliga starting to break away from Ryan Atkins. Yep, and here we go with Lindsay Webb. Is that Lindsay? It is Lindsay, it is Webster. Lindsay Webster. Absolutely right. She's in the in the lead right now for the women's elite field. They're currently uh, about, ooh, I'd say, just under three miles in since the last position, maybe just over three miles, actually. Um, would you yep. say, Steve, at, at this point in the course? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they're 
just uh, heading heading into some of the toughest parts of the dunes. Gee, yeah, um, uh, Webster looks strong today, doesn't she? Really, I mean, she always really, does, really, but really I mean, strong. Yep. gee, she looks yep. really strong today. She's just got a great, relaxed cadence going on. Absolutely. So um, they've just been over um, uh, Olympus and uh, hurdles, and then they're on their way back um, on on some of the faster sections of the course. We've got a few questions coming in from around the world. Actually, yep. my, my phone's going. I should I should answer a couple. Um, p- folks are wondering uh, what Ryan Atkins has got tucked into his shirt in the, in the pockets in his shirt. It does look like he's got some ice packets in there. Yeah, absolutely. I I I, I think that uh, we talked about the kind of uh, heat mitigation. It could be goose. It could be a, a bunch of stuff. But um, uh, it probably is ice. Um, at the beginning we saw him with that shirt on and uh that's that and it's now melted and that kit kept it nice and cool um what you get at this time of, of the evening too in the desert um <clears throat> for the folks watching is you, you do get a bit of a breeze starting to pick up and it actually gets quite cold overnight at this time of year it does yeah um you know so um you know with that with that little bit of wind that comes in at the end of the day you know, uh, with the wet shirt at the start and then of course as you sweat but again um, this has been practiced you know this is this is good the point. key preparation of like he knew exactly what the weather is it's, his, it's all very planned his webs are on bender as you can see for every, everybody watching uh, perhaps in the open category if you've done a spartan event the best way to do it just get your feet on there as quick as possible absolutely and new jobs great technique from lindsey webster there who's really ramping down the pace um with oh i can see esther behind her Far, in the uh, yeah i'm just looking at at, uh, at our uh at probably our 10 15 here. seconds mm. uh esther in the yellow um as uh they're just to just about to approach the rope wall um and uh then heading back over the dune so uh they've been on the one of the toughest parts of the course and that's where i think Lindsay made a little bit of a move over esther with annie not too far behind starting to build um, here stevie as they coming into the, the final off. pen and you can see um uh sergey oh. is currently in the lead ryan atkins uh, we can't quite tell how far back he is right now but uh sergey Paraligan has taken the lead in the men's 2022 Spartan World Championship over the 10k distance and uh, Sergey is coming right into the carry. Yeah, it is. It's the sandbag carry. It's a bit of a juicy one as well. So uh, this, <laughs> is, uh, this is this is not, not super long but the, the footing underneath is pretty look, gnarly. Stevie, look at those beautiful, uh, we call them fossil dunes. They're called yes. fossil dunes out here. They've, they've sort of, a, um, well, fossilized rock <laughs> sand um very, very very beautiful terrain and and this particular area that sergey's in right now is is what uh, backs on to um the uh the festival area where we're currently sitting in our broadcast position at the top of the screen there you can see the tents in the distance sergey making his way around the sandbag carry with no sign of ryan atkins behind him uh, I think he. I think he's going to be hot on his heels for sure. Uh, there's still spear throw to come, and there's still that good multi rig with uh, with monkey as well. So we've nicknamed it monkey in the middle. Um, talk talk to us about that. There, there's a monkey bars right in the middle. Yeah, monkey bars, and um, so the the original plan of that, and obviously you know uh, things change. Things change, of course <laughs> they do. Uh, trust trust goes missing, or you know things <laughs> things don't quite work out, or yep. we couldn't get certain things. Uh, so we just adapt, and it was a, a monkey into a multi rig. Fantastic footage here right Ooh. now, tracking with look Sergey Perelman. Look at this footage. <laughs> yeah, this is what it feels like to be an elite. Uh, men's racer in uh, in Abu Dhabi in 2022. You can see the referees and marshals pointing Sergey to drop his bag, and he looks behind him, glancing. Where's Ryan? Oh, he is absolutely got what an amazing performance that we have seen, Sergey. He, I, I, I spoke to him in Greece, and he's like, "I'm coming for it. I am going to be world champion." He absolutely wants this, and uh, and we've 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 seen we've seen an amazing performance by him today. Um, I want to have a quick look back to try and see where Ryan is because uh, the last um, well the last split we had at Dunkwall was it was uh, ten seconds behind. Yeah. So you know you called just before about ten to fifteen seconds. It's obviously you know if we're not seeing Ryan on screen right now, um, you know it's it's at least uh, it's at least five or so as uh, Sergey makes his way 
up the slip wall and, and oh down gosh, the other this side. It's going to be exciting because we've got spear throw next and he has so, to nail his so spear throw. The, here's the make or break. Let's take everybody through. What can go wrong for Sergey right now? Is it Can can he lose the world championship right now? The he answer is yes. absolutely can. Absolutely can. Tell so, us how and why. So the spear throw, one attempt, has to hit the target. There is a penalty loop which is going to take him about a minute to do. So... Um, it is a is it's one of the the quickest penalty loops that we have here, but um, here he comes up to spear throw right now. He will pull the spear out of the target by the little rope and attempt to hit the target. If he hits this, I can pretty much guarantee that he will get the rig. Haven't and seen, he will be world champion. Sorry, Steve. Haven't seen Ryan Atkins come into uh, the spear throw as of yet on the screen. Here's Sergey. He uh, needs to, to hit this him. for Let's the world championship. And sticks the spear throw. Looks behind him. No sign of Ryan Atkins. This could be the world championship for Sergey Paraleague and bases himself in Dubai. An athlete of Europe. He's coming through the rig. This is the uh, monkey in the middle, but it's not quite monkey in the middle. We call it multi in the middle and <laughs> monkey Who multi, knows? all sorts of stuff. Let's call it an extended multi rig, shall we? And here we go. He's got to get this. He's got to get this. He gets this bell. Yeah, he's got it. He's starting to celebrate. This is Sergey Paraliga, oh, and you watch. I am so chuffed for him. History in the making as he makes his way over Capital A Frame. It's a massive obstacle, isn't it, Steve? <laughs> really massive obstacle. And at this point, um, Sergey is 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 thinking of you know about uh, about the celebrations to come. You can see the finish line just meters away. The fire jump he's roaring. He's going to do a celebration. Look yeah, at I'm this. <laughs> Look at this in the desert of Abu. Derby, hosted by Abu Dhabi Sports Council this weekend. This is what this sport is all about, folks, as you're enjoying this from wherever you are in the world. You're watching a champion who has fought for many, many years for this, Steve, cross the fire, jump, in he comes. You are seeing the world champion. He can't believe this result. Sergey Paraligan crosses the finish line in first place. Steve, we have a new men's Spartan world champion holy smokes what a finish i'm almost shaking here and there's ryan atkins congratulating him gave it absolutely everything two of the world's best athletes here in ocr um wow what an absolute unbelievable performance david where do you think um where do you think sergey got it i mean it around the lake i mean sergey took off and we 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 saw Ryan try and put some of the uh, some of the speed down around the lake, and he just couldn't catch him. I mean, I think you know it was just the the turnover of Sergey and the speed on foot that that got it got it for him in the end. Um, you can see Spartan CEO and founder Joe DeSena just before on screen congratulating the the athletes. Um, yeah, the, the great crowd at the finish line and <laughs> and the and the uh, and the fire jump roaring. Now let's go back to the battle that's still taking place. Stevie, take us through what you're seeing. So I think this is second place on eight panger. We just saw Lindsay uh, go through this, and we've got all three. Uh, we got second place, third place, and fourth place. Alyssa Petrova, uh, Annie Doobie, and Esther Hodobagiova uh, from Slovakia. And, uh, yep, it's just made really quick work of Ape Hanger here. Um, Quite a high rig, um, relatively speaking. You're seeing Ape, Ape Hanger... Uh, over well, obviously over sand quite often an obstacle that we see over <laughs> in water the in the desert <laughs> absolutely you know um, a, a very a very high rig uh, relatively speaking um, to what maybe folks are used to uh, you know if you're coming from the ninja world it's um, it's, it's <laughs> not not exactly that high but in in Spartan terms it is you can see those knots in the rope as well single attempt uh, to get onto this obstacle for the for this championship absolutely single attempt as soon as feet leave the ground that is uh, considered an attempt. So so I've just got a split in from Lindsay um, to that group of three, which is extremely exciting. And that group uh, is about a minute in. So, uh, so Lindsay's about just under a minute ahead um, of uh, Esther, Annie, and Alyssa. And that's a really, really, uh, that's really, really exciting. So as we just see these uh, beautiful scenes here with the sun going down and... Uh, uh, some of the open races just uh, trying out this uh, obstacle. Uh, they've been through uh, a massive battle here. Um, I'm 
really wanting to try and get back to the 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 men's race to see who came in on the third uh the last split jeremy gachet um was was in third place um followed followed very very closely by greg uh gregory uh gregory Sprasson from poland uh peter signer pavel hardina and rylan shadeg uh following the five six and seven so uh, we will see once they actually, uh, they haven't actually finished yet. Jeremy Cachet has just finished. Uh, oh my goodness, in a time of one hour and six minutes. So um, we, we knew, David, we did actually know that the timing uh, was going to be tough. Um, we, we, we said 50 minutes to an hour, but we, we didn't really counter in that terrain. Um, an hour and three minutes was the finishing time from Sergey. I can't remember what our bet was. Well, was it, was uh, it under an hour or was it over an hour? It was probably in and around things. the hour. So it was over <laughs> an hour, which I was actually quite surprised. Um, and, that, and that just proves what a level and toughness of this course is. Uh, with um, uh, the Polish athlete, uh, Gregory... Gregory Swasson from Poland. Coming in, uh, in Which is actually place. a big surprise for me. For the men. Uh, for the men, which is absolutely brilliant. With uh, the two Czech athletes, uh, the Slovakian athlete and the Czech athlete. Mate, um, sorry to cut you off, Stevie. <laughs> look, look at this shot right now. I mean, I, I, I'm getting a little bit of FOMO um, <laughs> sitting inside here in the commentary position, although we are so lucky to be able to bring you uh, this race live around the world and you know just hello to everybody who's watching and I hope you're really enjoying this and getting a feel of what it's like out there in the desert I, I just can't emphasize enough what a beautiful place this is and, and a great place for a, an obstacle race it's it's not really standard you know we don't often see uh, obstacle races taking place on on deep sand um, especially uh, in, in these kind of hot conditions as well but uh, uh, just Eureka. such a special such a special place yeah, oh, brilliant stuff. So that's Eureka Everson from Denmark. Ulrike yeah. Evanson from Denmark um, uh, making her way right Fantastic now. Fantastic trail runner. Yes, um, uh, un underneath the uh, underneath the fence, Stevie. Yeah, there we go. Um, so uh, what a battle that we have in the women's race uh, for second, third, and fourth. Now, did Lindsay um, make a break early? I, I wonder if that was preemptive. Can't wait to find in, out. In, what's, in what sense? That. Take us through what you're thinking there. <laughs> so, a lot of people come up with a plan, um, you know, as, as they race this and they, they want to be in that final pack. And, uh, you know, sometimes races don't go to plans, but sometimes when they do, you know, you keep to your, oh, I'm going to keep within myself and then absolutely. What's the classic, uh, what's the classic quote? Every, everyone's got a plan to get punched oh, in the face. Guess, who who yeah. said that? Was it Mike Tyson? Oh, I can't Mike remember. Tyson? Yeah, I yeah. think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the sound certainly is going to do that to a lot of these athletes. But I, but I think Lindsay did have a plan to make a break. And uh, she made a break just after um, Twister uh, over those dunes where um, she is, you know, we knew that that was a very tough part of the course. Uh, we counted in a, in a, in a space of, um, you know, less than a quarter of a mile, nine leg sapping climbs up these up and down these dunes. Um, nine know, exactly yeah nine exactly we set this on purpose because um you know uh this is where it gives a uh, an advantage to those who are strong that have kind of trained for this specific type and so i'm not surprised that Lindsay is in first place um esther we knew is a is a is a quicker uh you know foot foot runner mm -hmm. uh so a runner instead of you know uh sort of um you know the bad ground runner as it were like Lindsay what? just as really really well on that tough undulating ground right um what you're seeing here right now and uh, so, sorry to uh, uh, everybody watching uh, if you uh, uh just to our producers here if you could just button off uh, just button off off my ears that would be great right now um so <laughs> <laughs> Yep, thank you. If you could just button off for me, thank you. Um, you're currently seeing uh, uh, what it looks like to drive through the desert. That was uh, that's because uh, we're, we're getting our camera teams out there to, to get you uh, footage of the ladies. A little bit technical because we were covering the men. We'll get you back footage as soon as we can. Um, but right now, you're just you're just seeing the sun uh, setting over the, this beautiful course. And and Steve, um, you know, as you as you got here, it's a it's a bit of a, a sort of a, a science and a work of art at the same time. 
time, isn't it, sitting a course like this? Well, you got to remember, we turn up to the desert, and there's, uh, you know, it's a blank canvas. Mm. It's a blank canvas, and um, we absolutely love what we do. Um, we come out, and the, the, you know, it, ha- it doesn't happen over the the first two weeks. It happens, a, you know, a whole build cycle is actually. Um, there's a lot of pre-planning. Um, you know, you yourself was involved with this as well with, uh, you know, several site visits um, and, uh, you know, several skilled people, yourself and Garfield and, you know, lots of different people behind the scenes, uh, you know, making deals, making um, negotiations of what venue we can use, how we can use it, what are the restrictions. And then and then the course kind of starts coming in into play and, you know, uh, well, fa- well, that's months good- in advance, right. we have all these site visits and then we start, you know, we... we Bring look the trailers in and we start building it. Look at, look at this shot right now. Isn't that absolutely spectacular? <laughs> You're seeing sunset live <laughs> over the desert in Abu Dhabi. We're in Al Wathba Desert Resort, um, a beautiful resort here. We've, we're so lucky to be, uh, to be here. So it's a beautiful hotel resort. Um, and then on the back of the resort, you just have this kind of expanse of desert oh. in the beginning here. Um, and the shots you're seeing is this kind of scrubland with you know, sort of uh, uh, sandy sort of scrub and then it gets straight out and and the dunes get bigger and bigger and that's what we saw Sergei Paraligan and Ryan Atkins battling on this afternoon and it was the the running power of Sergei that sort of overcame um, in the end, didn't he? He was able to just get that extra bit of speed but the the battle was just incredible out there uh, through the deep sand. Oh, absolutely. And uh, we can see these tremendous views and uh, hence why... Uh, you know, this is some of the most beautiful running that you're going to get in an OCR um, championship race. Uh, okay. Absolutely incredible. D- d- data-wise right now, um, we're seeing Lindsay Webster um, uh in the lead okay we, we have footage back and thanks to our team it's a, it's a bit epic out there right now with the <laughs> you know all sorts of logistics going on but you know we do have uh footage of lindsey webster yep. with those trademark uh neon yellow gators uh, absolutely sort of Again, tearing it up a lot of preparation so lindsey webster has just crossed the cross the sort of the the hard so she's just gone over the last part of the really tough dunes and uh and then she's uh into invert wall now she's running towards she's going to run past um Herkois into the Mubadala mile um uh any second now and uh once she's um gone around the lake you know she's going to hit atlas in a minute as well around the lake zigzag walls rope climb and then she'll be on the homeward bound um so we should get a split here a any minute now uh once she crossed this mother dollar mile um timing mat and and uh off she goes towards the Bang. lake and atlas we have it so uh lindsey webster is 10 current well uh, 10 minutes ahead of esther hordebagger or what we think um and she's currently well esther hasn't gone over she the hasn't gone over the mat, mat yet. so as soon as she's gone over but the mat we get a good r- split rough, roughly speaking from the last split i'm going to guess it's about, about 10 minute. minutes yeah, um, she, was, she was a minute over the last one, so um, it yeah. probably will be in and around minute, two minute uh, gap. Yeah, my bad. Sorry, um, ten to <laughs> ten to one, uh, a minute, a minute or two gap. Didn't mean, sorry, to, I did, got, didn't I mean got, to blow this out. I got, I got you, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. It's been, it's been a long weekend. I, I apologise, everybody. There, um, yeah, a, a minute or two, which, which <laughs> may as well be ten actually, with the sort of pace that she's putting down right now, because she's got a, a pretty flat and fast. Um, Mubadala Mile coming up around the the lake area. You can see the dust. Like it, it you were talking about the sugar find. Um, Cast, you know, the, the, oh, the powder the sand, sugar, and you can just see it just coming up constantly. Uh, but she's uh, using those gators very, very well. You know, you'll see a lot of the um, a lot of the age group had gators, but they didn't glue them correctly. I know that Lindsay and Ryan went for a. You know, got them professionally actually, glued and made sure that it was a key uh, point. things worked. It's a key your point. Quip, your equipment works. Yeah. So you know, when, when it comes to sand running, you've got a, you've got a few options. You know, you can have sort of gaiters that fit under the shoe. They mm. usually they have like a rubber strap that goes under the the arch of the foot, and then maybe Velcro over the top. They're really not as as um, let's call it sand tight, water tight, <laughs> no. sand tight as um as 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 when you stitch and 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 uh, and glue. And you can see what Lindsay's got there is, is you know glued. Around 
around the outside of the shoe and it just allows her to, to, to sort of bomb those downhills on the dune without without sort of worrying about the shoes filling with sand she comes up to the atlas carry now that's the red uh, atlas ball for the female competitors um, really no no issue for Lindsay on this obstacle she's Absolutely done it not. countless times throughout her career and oh mate I just I just think that um, that that you know in terms of in terms of athletics in terms of history making in OCR Lindsay Webster has got to be one of the one of the greatest of all time absolutely and she's really putting on a show here but Esther Hortabagi over one minute 10 seconds behind exactly uh, coming over that time in that as Alyssa Petrova is 10 seconds behind that as well and um Annie Doobie dropping off the pace a little bit another 20 seconds behind as well so um that you know that three four five is gonna you know be very very exciting to watch um you never know there's a lot of things go you know there's still quite as we saw with the men's race there's a lot to go and a lot still could go right or wrong um you know for for these athletes as they're running into the sunset this is absolutely stunning it's shot like we, of it's Lindsay like, Webster it's like we planned this it's like we planned it this way Steve <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, oh. it's absolutely. Stevie's loving it out there, and I must say oh, um, dude. that uh, it, it is brilliant to watch. And now, hot on the heels, coming into uh, Atlas Carry. Yeah, and here comes Esther, and she she makes short work of this. Esther, um, you know, very very strong for a very slight petite girl. Uh, just really, really. Um, Really, really strong. Great on the obstacle. She's proved. She actually proved that in uh, you know in Sparta and also uh, winning the European champion uh, championship. And uh, you know she really has to fight, fight hard. And I think that was Alyssa Petrova. Um, Alyssa Petrova just behind, and Annie Doobie just behind that. So and his Lindsay still running in into the sunset, uh, just uh, running past some of these open races who have been running the beast. Um, Yes, and uh, what a great experience it is for, for people who are out there and finishing the the beast course to uh, to <laughs> to be there while Lindsay Webster flies by. Um, you can see Esther Hortabagi over just moments ago at the at the Atlas Carry, and, and close on her heels was Alyssa Petrova. Esther, of course, coming from Slovakia, uh, had the pleasure of being in Slovakia just a week or so ago with an incredible group of people where we had an Agogi, which is the Spartan you know sixty hour nonstop. Uh, in endurance event and i tell you what they breed them pretty tough in slovakia steve that's that's um it's, it's no joke i remember actually being at the spartan world championship in 2019 and anybody that remembers that race there was a massive snowstorm that came through that's oh. your backyard and i remember being near the water and um a whole bunch of uh, athletes from uh, slovakia and czech republic came through just and loving it they were loving it of course of course they were <laughs> i spent a bit of time out in slovakia in the Tatra mountains and you know, a great white water rafting and climbing. But Lindsay there, like, with a smile on her face, just loving it. And here comes the gritty Slovakian. Um, really, really wants this. This is probably going to be her biggest test of the year. As you can see, she fights. Oh. She was freezing in Greece. Um, well, she's not freezing now. Yeah, I can she's tell not you. freezing now. But she, you know, she she fought very, very hard in that race to... Uh, um, you know, to win that, and here she's fighting, and she still could be within a chance. Um, you know, Lindsay has to have that buffer just in case she misses the spear. Really hope that she doesn't, um, but there's always that chance that she can. And if Esther gets it, that penalty loop is going to be around this minute, minute ten. Yeah, um, take us, take us through the penalty loop on spear. Um, you know, so let's let's go through some scenarios right now. You know, was, we may as well. You know, let's say Lindsay misses the spear throw. Oh, it's going to be tight. How tight? Uh, we're looking at about a minute 20. And if you really, really, really run it, absolutely red line full out, you could probably get it in within uh, a minute. Um, how? Well, maybe just a bit over. But then you are absolutely taxed to then tackle um, the monkey multi. So, um, <laughs> so she's so so. Last timing, Matt, we called it. You know, a minute. You know, about a minute and ten seconds. They're coming up to another one now, so we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to kind of get a an update on that in about four or five minutes time. Um, but really working hard here, Esther now, and uh, uh, seeing Alyssa and Annie having a battle for that last podium spot behind them. Um, 
Oh, exciting stuff, David, exciting stuff. Indeed it is, and, you know, as we were just saying, it really does come down to the spear throws, the, the ladies are making their way through uh, the, the circuit that goes around this lake, and we're about mm, two kilometres from the finish at this point. Uh, uh, and then the, the spear throw, of course, coming up, which will be the make or break obstacle. I don't think uh, with the proficiency of these athletes there'll be any issue with anything else. So, um, you know, uh, pending... Uh, uh, Lindsay hitting the spear throw. We're going to find out who will take uh, the female title in the 2022 Spartan World Championship. You're going to get a preview uh, right now of a of an obstacle uh, that you'll be able to enjoy next year if you're coming out to a Spartan event, Sprint Super Beast or Ultra. This is the uh, this yeah, is a zigzag. zigzag wall. Yeah, so you start with pipes, um, not allowed feet. Uh, your feet can touch the wall, but you're not allowed to feet on the the middle section. Then they're going to find the foot grips for the uh, the actual. Um, uh, Z walls or Z walls, depending on where you're from. Uh, you, I've, I've kind of gone American. <laughs> That's <laughs> um, okay. As you can it. see, um, Lindsay just see. making short work of this, and then round the corner, um, and then uh, you're onto the ropes and to the giant cowbell. Um, I think that's enough to take a cow out, that, <laughs> that cowbell. It's a cow, cow kind of walk along with its, with its chin anyway. on the ground. <laughs> it's a big cow. It's a big <laughs> <laughs> and there's Lindsay Webster touching the bell and off she goes. She did actually make very short work of that. Um, it's deceptive, isn't it, the, the, the Z wall? Oh, and it's certainly the zigzag wall being extended version. It's deceptive um, how quickly these elite athletes make their way through it. And you've got to remember a lot of cross-training, you know, both, both Lindsay and Ryan. But Lindsay's a climber. She's a good, good climber, and she will make short work of that. Um, and this is the beauty of, uh, you know, uh, it, we've always had this discussion of what makes, uh, you know, if you're interested in a Spartan race, like, what direction do you come from in terms of sport? We've had triathletes, we've had crossfitters, we've had lots of different types of sports coming into it. And I've always said this, that uh, you know, if, you've got, um, if you've got mountain running skills and climbing skills, then you're going to be very good at Spartan. Because it's that gritty strength, you know, like a lot of climbers know, you, you, you pack all your ropes and stuff and you can carry 80 pounds into the crag and you're walking up into the mountains and, you know, if you're a mountain runner anyway, you're, you know, running up and down them. Um, and then the climber, you've got that grip strength and Lindsay just showed that, you know, beautiful grip strength just there, um, making very light work of that zigzag obstacle. And she's fatigued, um, you know, and yet, um you know she just made yeah that look really really easy way where it will take somebody about 10 seconds you know um longer yeah so the, the, i think i guess the tip is if you're uh, if you're looking to improve your obstacle proficiency uh, get down to the to the climbing rock climbing gym yeah and yeah, um absolutely particularly doing some bouldering and and you know just getting used to to fatiguing your arms for for a long time and and that certainly helps with um, with these overhead obstacles. I know a lot of folks who are you know proficient runners um, may may fear uh, you know the the overhead nature of obstacle course racing. But mm -hmm. you know um, we're seeing some great progress. For example, you know uh, uh, on on the other side and, and in in, uh, in the athletes that are taking part in modern pentathlon and obstacle yep. racing now, and, and their proficiency build over say six or eight months, and just how quickly athletes are getting getting good at at this sport as Lindsay makes her way to the rope climb she's she's past the timing mat just there so we'll give you the exact split in just a second to Esther Horta bag you over no problem of course with this obstacle for Lindsay she's uh, again just done this countless times in her career yep absolutely and again very proficient just to see you know against some of the other elite males who are just cheering her on uh right now she was just you know up and down that rope real real quick super you know I've, in and out i've kind of really i'm actually you know i know some people <laughs> in the community are gonna be a bit worried we it's, it's quite cool actually to see Lindsay just just hammering through the crowd there and, it's brilliant you know, some, some folks like you could see uh, there's a, uh, one of the open races there just tagging along and, oh, and clearing the path come for on let's go Lindsay. Yeah, that's just, really really cool yeah you know it's fantastic and uh you know she approached she's approaching um bucket carry right now um as we can see some great footage here of uh, the the sun just disappearing and uh you know this is this golden golden hour 
Um, you know, we've probably got about another 20, 30 minutes before it gets real dark. So there, there's certainly going to be some uh, racers out there. Um, hopefully they brought headlamps with them. And that guy, <laughs> that guy just led the way, just paced, paced, paced it for a little bit. Probably had the... Uh, the best 100 metres of his life. I, I don't think we have to worry too much about um, uh, pacing rule there. I, I, <laughs> I don't I'm think so. I think fairly, I'm fairly confident that that, uh, that particular person was uh, was was part of the uh, open uh. race. But, but you know, it just goes to show you, right? Like, there was a guy running along with, with Lindsay there. He's, he's fallen off the pace. I mean, she is setting a, a ridiculously quick pace out there. It's no joke. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really easy to watch this stuff on TV, and you can kind of – it's deceptive, really, like just how easy athletes at this level make this stuff look. Lindsay yep. grabs uh, the red bucket, which is the female-specific bucket in bucket carry, and – Makes her way onto uh, a relatively short carry compared to some, especially for you folks in Europe. I know there's some some uh, absolutely leg crushing. Yeah, uh, I know. Carries. Still, still um, uh, you know, still, still a couple of minutes as she's just moving very efficiently through this. Uh, the buckets are about sixty pounds for the women, and so it's uh, um, pretty impressive how she just moves across this. You know, she's just so strong um, in the sand, and we know that her legs are. Um, you know, getting tired from uh, you know the the, the rest what, of the course. What, what going into the mind of Lindsay Webster right now as best we can, Stevie? What what, uh, what what is she thinking right now? I mean, is she is she thinking of the finish line at the moment? Is she thinking about Esther? Is she is she just in the in the zone and not thinking about anything? What what, what, what do you think? Yeah, always very difficult to sort of get in, in into into the insight of uh, or the mind of Lindsay Webster. But, uh, you know, I, I think there's a couple of factors going on here. She's trying to get as much buffer as she possibly can because that spear throw in her mind is a 50-50. She does practice it. She does, um, you know, she knows she can hit it. But it was just a just in case. So she is pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing to make sure that she has enough um, you know, buffer. And, you know, we're talking about that minute, minute, 10 seconds. Um, she needs that. Um, and we've probably got the other split right now. Um, and we're still, oh, she, she's, uh, put, again, she's just pushed it to two minutes over um, Esther Hortzbegi over. So, so you called it exactly per, exactly right there, Steve. You know, she's, she's trying to put that little bit of distance on right now. Now, do you, do you really think that it's a 50-50 for her with spear throw? Ah, uh, you'd give it that odd, that that sort of those sort of odds. No, I think it, I think it's more seventy. You know, it it it, it depends because people get very. Ne- if she if she has given herself a buffer. Well, historically, how do you find Lindsay at the spear throw? So 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 Lin- Lindsay is actually pretty good at the spear throw. She does she does get it. She missed it in Big Bear. Uh, I uh, actually I can't remember that one, um, but. Um, yeah, I believe her and Emma Cook Clark, who's unfortunately not here today, had a great battle on that mountain and uh, then had a battle at the burpee zone. Um, How does Big Bear compare, by the way? I, I, I was, you know I was what? The time, I, I just saw the times. The times are pretty much identical to something which is like a 3,000 feet of elevation that's a, game. That's an evil course, isn't it? Big Bear. It is, but the, ty- <laughs> the, 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 the winning time yeah. in, in Big Bear was around for the Super was about an hour and three minutes. So... This is this is very very comparable to a mountain course of like the pace that they're moving as we see Esther Holtzbagi over on this bucket carry. You've called it throughout the day, Steve. So <laughs> with the 2023 Spartan World Championship, uh, you know, uh, perhaps uh, perhaps we'll see uh, a few more athletes heading out to the mountains. Oh, absolutely, and uh, you know this. Is, this is the key training grounds, you know, uh, elevation, mountains, tough, tough terrain. How about um, altitude and, and heat training? You know, it's it, it always there's some interesting uh, papers and studies, you know, out there. You can check them out online, you know, between, um, you know, the, the similarities between training at altitude yep. and training at heat. You know, w- when you're in a hot environment, obviously, you not exactly the same as altitude. You, you can't. You can't sort of uh, replace it one for one, but heat training has some incredibly similar effects on the body, doesn't it? For you know, uh, red blood cells and, and and all these sorts of benefits for uh, aerobic endurance. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, the, 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 these these athletes and have been studying the weather, been studying the terrain, and um, you know, those those who we're seeing doing very well 
has specifically trained this kind of stuff. So like the Lindsay, Ryan, Sergey's, Alyssa's, um, and Esther's in this in well, this world are doing, you know, that's why they're that step ahead. And, you know, and, and with a sport that's really relatively young and, and you know, on the, on the world stage, you know, compared to other sports, um, that that is just becoming more and more apparent these days. You know, the early days of obstacle course racing, you know, like the specificity <laughs> might have been that, you know, maybe you went to the sauna once or twice before you headed out to a race that was yeah, in a hot, hot you're environment. Like, you run around and then go to the kids' park and do a couple of pull-ups. <laughs> it's, now, it's now a lot more, you know, specific. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as, you can, as you can see with Lindsay and the, 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 the cross-training and, you know, how much biking and, and uh, you know, skiing. How do you find um, that? balance though steve like for, for everybody watching that's you know maybe you you're keen to get into this and maybe um maybe you've already done a spartan race of, of, of some distance with a sprint to 5k 10k super maybe you've even done a beast over the half marathon how does somebody find the balance between running and uh and cross training especially when people have you know busy lives yeah. well i'd as, as you can see, all of these athletes are runners. You know, it is a running sport. You have to run from each obstacle. However, um, you know, true true runners um, like that cadence. They just, you know, they don't like the breakup of, you know, stopping, picking up something and moving. And so um, training that is uh, extremely difficult. Um, because a lot of people will find it very difficult. As Lindsay uh, puts puts the uh, the good Don't old you love jug. This? I love that. The Bedouin, the Bedouin carry. <laughs> so we call this the we call this the Bedouin carry. I, I'm not oh, sure. Brilliant. I'm not sure the be, the Bedou uh, <laughs> drag those giant jars out in the desert too often, but it's um it's romantic and I love it. And I think that uh, I think it's a it's a very nice local touch to this race. And, and Lindsay made short work of that. Oh, yeah, that's and, fantastic. And, 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 you know, just going back to what you're saying. I mean, I think. Um, it's a fine line, I guess, is what is, is what I'm understanding from yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, it, you you train you train as a you train as a runner, um, and uh, and then you start slowly adding in, um, you know, these strength obstacles, um, you know, uh, sort of overhead grip, um, you know, and then techniques for each of these obstacles. Because as we said, you know, especially at this level, um, two or three seconds per obstacle gains you so much. It's um, it's, it's it's interesting too, isn't it? Then you look at the um the body types out there. I mean, I think Ryan, you know, Ryan Atkins took second place today. A little bit of an outlier. I mean, he's, he's, he's a bigger guy. Um, but you, you take a look at Esther Hortobagio, for example. You see, you know, she's quite slight. Lindsay's yep. quite slight. And anybody that thinks um, that these athletes don't have strength based on the the, the, the look of their their body, you know, maybe they they look more like like runners. Gee, they're wrong, aren't they? Because the, these the strength to weight ratio of an obstacle racer. Is incredible, absolutely incredible, and you'll see that in the proficiency through, um, you know, just just this through monkey bars. Now, you know, running up, um, someone who is not proficient in, um, you know, be it redlining into an obstacle, uh, will feel very uncomfortable doing monkey bars when their heart rate is 175. Um, and Lindsay's so used to that feeling. Um, as she's running what in, a, what a great shot too oh. that was! Good, great, great job by our team out there. All the team, this coverage is absolutely fantastic. I, I love to see the drone right down there under the rig as Lindsay hits the hits the dunk. Wall. I, I've got a good story about the the the, 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 the dunk wall here, as you can see. It's Tell not, us. It's not our usual. It's not our usual thing, but uh, no, what, in, in what sense? Like, it's a um, pub so ground. It's a, yeah, a dunk bath. It's, it's, it's a dunk bath. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> usually we dig down. We weren't allowed to dig. Um, However, we uh, we bought it. We bought in the uh, the skip um, or the dumpster, uh, as skip. it were. Skip. I haven't heard that word <laughs> since I was in um, primary school. Oh, and it's it's a, a British Aussie word. I'm yeah, sure. yeah, it's definitely British. Um, uh, wasn't actually supposed to be in that position, but that's where the truck got stuck. So it's where it's um, it's being put. <laughs> it's where it's where <laughs> now there you go. <laughs> I, I like your honesty, Steve. It's where the truck got stuck. Got stuck, so that's where and, we put and the that's, and that's, and that's where we're at. Sometimes it happens, but nobody knows unless I'm going to say stuff like that. <laughs> no, but that, that's fair. And I this mean, is the whole point yeah. about you know, um, uh, it's just absolutely obstacle racing. Is exactly, an adaptive, setting it up. <laughs> yeah, it's an adaptive thing, and when you're an obstacle racer, you adapt to what's going on out there, and 
and it's no different behind and the, the scenes. build. The oh build. boy! If the truck gets stuck. You put the <laughs> you put the obstacle there. <laughs> we won't write a, a book on event production uh, based on that, guys. But um, uh, out there, it was a perfectly good I've spot. Got some stories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, sure whether whether they're stories that might be suitable on air talk or not. But here's Lindsay Webster with the sandbag carry. You can see the way that she does it. She oh, it's it up. Ryan. Oh, and uh, and her partner Ryan Atkins with her supporting her from the sideline. So He's just awesome. taken second place, and you can God. see these two just just the way that they team up and support each other and, 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 and work together on the science of this sport. Ryan's got um, Ryan's got enough uh, in the tank, as you can see, to uh, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> to be to be out there jogging along beside Lindsay. Oh, that's that, that that's so awesome. And uh, he'd, be, he'd be truly, truly proud of her. And she, she, the first thing we just, what she'll say is probably, how did you do? Um, because she's, she's that kind of person. But, but maybe people watching think like, oh, well, you know, is, is the sport so small that like, you know, like you've got the, you know, the, the couple out there, you know, crushing, crushing world championships. And, you know, we've saying that it, it's a growing sport, but it, it is, it, <laughs> there's still a, a very large number of competitors out there, certainly less than the elite carriers, but a large number of competitors out there. It's just a freak occurrence that you just happen to have two people yep. that are absolutely world-class at what they do. Um, and, and they're showcasing to the world right now um, uh, their, their abilities. Yeah, and it's Sergey and her and his partner Alyssa as well, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, you know, if you want a world championship and you're single, <laughs> <laughs> you need to find someone else. <laughs> is the lesson that that can uh, oh, that can, that can be your ultimate training part at, partner 24 seven. Here's uh, uh, Esther Horta Baggy over, who is just gritting it out. Yeah, uh, we had about a couple two of minutes behind, I think, with yes. as she's approaching sandbags right now. And Lindsay is actually on her way to spit. Well, she's got slip wall first, but then she's on her way to spear throw. So that will be the make or break. Um, however, I think that she has enough of the uh, the buffer, as it were. So um, here we see Lindsay coming up to slip wall in this beautiful, beautiful sunset desert evening. What do you think, Steve? Ropes on a slip wall uh, when when in, in an environment like this, uh, maybe maybe one or two footer, maybe a uh, little little little. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe we should make it a little bit harder. I know you love this. I I, do. I think this is a really just great like flow through obstacle um unless you want to make it a uh a, a penalty loop with trying to make them run up after a, a slippy slippy slide we'll see <laughs> we'll, we'll see these are the sort of things that it's great for the sport and you know um as i said before big shout out to all the all the national federations and the international federation world obstacle for sanctioning this event uh, this weekend and all the great work that everybody's doing around the world for the sport of obstacle course racing. Uh, this is this is the the development of a sport in action, and and we're seeing Lindsay Webster come up to the make or break right now, folks. This is it. This is the spear throw, and this will decide the champion. Yeah, I mean uh, Esther will still have to come in and still have to hit it. Um, I think should Lindsay the, miss? Yeah, uh, should Lindsay miss? Um, I think that um, you know uh, the penalty loop is doable uh, with the buffer that she has. And Stand here by. we go. Oh, you're kidding me! <laughs> <laughs> we actually didn't know what happened, but let's have a look. Wait, 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 wait! She's there. Made she's it. there. She hit it. She's she made absolutely it. hit it. And oh. I was like, <laughs> the only glitch that we have had the whole race. That's phenomenal. Nope. So here's Lindsay coming in. I know Lindsay's super strong, so I don't think she's going to fail this. Stevie, I'm going to call through the, the, the multi-rig here. You can see coming through the monkey into the rings and then into the, the rope. And then when she gets to that big capital A frame, Steve Hammond's going to take us and call it for the, uh, for the finish of the female <laughs> world championship, the 2022 Spartan World Championship. We're seeing Lindsay Webster for another title i mean this is history in the making stevie take us through the end well we've got uh the wonderful staff just directing her up and over she's uh she's going over with some of the open races uh barefoot <laughs> barefoot as well which is uh if you're gonna run anything barefoot it's gonna be uh it's gonna be this race but <laughs> holy smokes what an absolute amazing performance um you know especially that middle part from lindsay again i think that she had a plan as she uh 
Not even going to celebrate at the top. She's too humble for that. This is just um, a textbook performance. Oh, absolute brilliant. She's still got a, a little bit to go on this uh, monster, monster capital A How many feet high is that? Uh, it's 52 feet, actually. Um, <laughs> look, uh, look, look at Lindsay this. Lindsay Webster bringing it home over the fire jump is your 2022 world champion, Lindsay Webster, two times in a row. Oh. Absolutely brilliant performance by Lindsay Webster just crossing the finish line, the fire roaring in the background, the beautiful desert in Al Wathba here in Abu Dhabi. And uh, two champions have been crowned today, Sergey Perligan, uh, just a little while ago, taking the men's title. There's Lindsay Webster giving her partner, Ryan Atkins, a hug, and he took second place. And, and I mean, she is just ecstatic. Look, oh. look, look, look at how... Uh, uh, how re well, I guess relaxed she looks. I mean, why wouldn't you be? Well done, world Lindsay champion, Webster. She's double world champion. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And, and she's 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 relaxed. She's she's chatting. Uh, she's smiling, and just a beautiful personality. Esther Horta Baggio. Oh, what a throw! Hits the spear throw. To, Almost a little bit, oh, I can't believe I hit it, um, as we see Alyssa Petrova. And Alyssa did so well last year in, in 2021 in the, in, the, in the Abu Dhabi Desert in Liwa, also taking a, 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 a high-ranking position, a podium second position place, in yeah. second place. And uh, Alyssa Petrova hits the spear throw. Fantastic Ooh, job. Oh, this could be a finish. This could be a finish for second place. Alyssa's got to really get on this. Here we go. Um, so, monkey bars into rings, rings into ropes, as we see Esther Hortbaggy over. I think I see that bell ringing. I think she must have already completed it. I am not 100%. That she made the rig. <laughs> I see her. I see her. I see. I saw, I saw the, uh, the middle rope swinging. Deep oh, breath, folks. There it is. Alyssa Petrova. Here we go. We'll see you in a minute. Alyssa Petrova hits the bell. There she is. She did make it. Yeah, she I did make it. You see the flashes of the cameras going off in the background of <sighs> our commentary position. I can hear the shouting of the MCs. A crowd has gathered here in the desert. The fire's roaring. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant scenes. Just, oh. just an outstanding event weekend, thanks to Abu Dhabi Sports Councilors. You're seeing Esther Hortabagi over the Slovakian crossing the finish line in second place. She's, <laughs> She's just ecstatic. absolutely ecstatic. And two brilliant athletes, brilliant people, great personalities. And the sportsmanship and the, and the sort of camaraderie as well this weekend's been first class, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely unbelievable. And Alyssa Petrova, well done you for bringing in third place absolutely fantastic here she comes across she'll be ecstatic over the fire jump in this beautiful sunset evening and let the party commence <laughs> we have our <laughs> we have our podium set for male <sighs> and female athletes and you know pending of course you know the the official uh, judgments any infractions or anything of course the the team go through the race and 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 look at all the footage and and make sure everything's above board but i think you know judging by the way everything looks everything was absolutely perfect out there just as we say a textbook race by lindsay webster a, a close battle by sergey perligan and ryan atkins for first and second and and jeremy gachet we haven't what really spoken enough what a performance by jeremy I let's like, talk about I'm, jeremy because I'm we, we haven't away by this he's 44 years old and he's probably the oldest podium uh i have to i have to check this but he might be the oldest oldest podium winner um absolutely um you know Absolutely incredible by uh, by the Frenchman um, itself, and uh, we we will put the um, the top ten standings up uh, in just a minute, as we see. Um, I think Annie Duby is going to be bringing in fourth place, um, and uh, um, Eureka Everson from Denmark um, is probably be coming in in fifth depending on what happens on the spear throw. 5,000 people taking part in this uh, incredible weekend here in Abu Dhabi for the 2022 Spartan World Championship hosted by Abu Dhabi Sports Council. 5,000 people and more than 85 countries uh, represented this weekend, Steve. I think that's the most we've seen in, uh, in Spartan history. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. And it has been a buzzing event as well. Like, it's just, just seeing people, like, throughout the Bill Week just coming in, just super excited. And then today, as we saw Annie Doobie just finish there, congratulating, the bringing in fourth place. She's had a phenomenal race. Well done, Annie Doobie uh, from the USA.
cast of characters at the finish line. You can see in the, in the white cap just back there was uh, the uh, president of World Obstacle, Ian Adamson, at the finish line. <laughs> of course, Spartan CEO and founder Joe DeSantis there. And look at that festival. you got the, the lights starting to, uh, to sort of shine across the desert and this, this beautiful uh, venue. A bit of a party planned tonight, I think, too, Steve. We've got awards at 8 p.m. local time. I'm there already, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I might be as well. It's been, it's been a hot and, th- hot and thirsty day in the desert our team is uh, uh here in the commentary position are starting to celebrate in the background but you know the most important thing right now is we have our our referee team going through the results you can see the three f- female champions the, the world champion in the middle uh lindsey webster uh on her right uh, is uh, esther hortabaggy over and of course Alyssa petrova there in the in the black uh, uh top and, and shorts she is just uh having a brilliant uh, elevation of her career isn't she oh, phenomenal uh, it's just just been in a brilliant brilliant race uh i think um uh the final finish in female time was 112 114 and 115 for first second and third respectively absolutely fantastic uh we're gonna bring it in here guys let's uh, just um yeah for everybody there you know just as we as we take these these pictures uh from the uh from the finish line it's uh <laughs> it's uh it's uh j- maybe you can just give us the final finish times for the men and women before we wrap yeah 100 percent. i've been jumping up and down in the chair and sort of all excited watching watching this finish so uh so lindsey webster uh with a finishing time of 112 49 esther holtbaggy over bringing in second place with 114 42 and Alyssa Petrova with a time of 115.19 uh, bringing in third place. The first, uh, the first three for the uh, the men. Sergey with a time of 103. Ryan Atkins with a time of 103.59, and Jeremy Gachet bringing it in for the last podium spot. Obviously, all unofficial until we get the um, uh, the proper rulings on this uh, for 106. Uh, Stevie, oh, oh my God, it's been uh, amazing. <laughs> we got, Steve needs to go lie down. Um, we are going to go and plan our awards ceremony. Thank you all so much for joining us for this live broadcast. I hope you've enjoyed it as I'm much exhausted. as... I'm <laughs> exhausted. As right. much as these guys out there. We'll look after you, don't worry. Uh, Dave Watson and Steve Hammond here in the desert in Abu Dhabi. We hope you've had a great ride with us. We've enjoyed every second being here with you. This is the 20... 20- 22 Spartan World Championship coming to you live from Abu Dhabi and hosted by the Abu Dhabi Sports Council. We'll see all of you guys very, very soon. People think I'm crazy for doing this. But let's be honest. <laughs> Are we all a little crazy? That's what makes life fun, baby. So come get crazy with us. And me. And me. Come lift with us. Come hang with me. Come throw spears with us. I know you can do it. We all can.